It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Andy Anako, Renee Ritchie, and Alex Lindsay are all here. We're going to talk about the rumors about WWDC coming up in June, what they may announce, including a, ni a new iPhone SE, and uh, a tale of woe having to do with Apple's campus and a solo drone. It's all coming up next on Mac Break Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 598, recorded Tuesday, February 20th, 2018. Drone down at Apple Park. MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by Audible. For a free audiobook with a 30-day free trial, go to audible.com slash MacBreak or text MacBreak to 500-500. And by Casper, a sleep brand that continues to revolutionize its line of products to create an exceptionally comfortable sleep experience one night at a time. You can save $50 towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash MacBreak and using the promo code MacBreak at checkout. And by WordPress. Make WordPress.com your online home. Plans start at just $4 a month. Go to WordPress.com slash MacBreak to get 15% off your brand new website today. It's time for MacBreak Weekly, the show where we cover the latest Apple news with the Apple and the and the Apple team assembles. <laughs> Andy Anako, all the way out there in left field. We had to put you out in left field. He's from the Chicago Sun Times, CWB.com, because Alex Lindsay is in. Playing in for a shortstop today. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about keep staying on your toes. And uh, on our third baseman, Renee Ritchie. From I'm going deep, Leo. I'm going deep. Yeah. Ah, ah. Catchers and okay. pitchers report. Yeah. Uh, let me see your studio <laughs> You're now. You're, you've you've got. The, I saw your vector video now. You're going video oh, on awesome. the vector. Yeah. Thank you. So you had to um, set up an actual studio with purple lights and. Oh, I just made them purple because your lights were purple and I wanted to feel like part of the oh, team. Oh, aren't you sweet? Yeah. You With a hue, you can do anything. I know. It's it's almost like having a lighting person up in the rafter is just going, purple! I know. Yellow! I love it. I love it. And then you smear Vaseline on the lens and I look normal again. So, uh, update all your devices. There's a new iOS in town. And a new uh, Mac OS too, right? Updates all, all the around. OSs. All the OSs. TV OS too. We are Watch now OS, up to yeah. eleven point two point six. We are safe from Tegaloo. <laughs> it's all it's all <laughs> the fault of Unicode. I blame Unicode. Unicode. I, I started asking around, asking a bunch of of uh, developers who work on messaging apps, and Unicode parsing. I mean, Apple's had a particular string of problems. They had it with Cyrillic. They've had it with emojis, with non-break space characters, uh, and now with Tegaloo characters. And it's just getting that input from Unicode and showing it on the screen it seems to sometimes result in a a world of. So Tegaloo uh, is an Indian language. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm trying to find the character, but I guess nobody wants to show it. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you hadn't updated, it would just crash whatever application you were trying to show wow. it in. And then wow. had to restart just, just it, pronounce, it would Just crash pronounce again. it phonetically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'll uh, crash your speakers. <laughs> it's not the first time this has happened. The, there have been many text bombs, right? Yeah. yeah, it's again, it's the Unicode parsing engine. Once in a while, it just encounters a character that causes the entire thing to give up and, and run home in the most fiery, painful way possible. As you might imagine, uh, Russell Monroe has his response. Here is the secret leaked list of major 2018 security vulnerabilities. Number one, Apple products crash when displaying certain Telugu or Bengali character combinations. Number two, an attacker can use a timing attack to exploit a race condition and garbage collection to extract a limited number of bits from the Wikipedia article on Claude Shannon. <laughs> number three, at the cafe on 3rd Street, the post-it note with the Wi-Fi password is visible from the sidewalk. Are we supposed to figure out which ones are true, which ones are <laughs> false, Leo? Is that this game? A flaw in some x86 CPUs could allow a root user to de-escalate to normal account privileges. Apple products catch fire when displaying emojis with diacritical remarks. <laughs> Haskell isn't side effect free after all. The effects are just concentrated in this one computer in Missouri that no one's checked in a while. 
<laughs> Nobody really knows how hypervisors work, but there are a couple of these are Apple. Apple products grant remote access if you send them words that break the I before E rule. <laughs> but my favorite is this one. Apple products execute any code printed over a photo of a dog with a saddle and the baby riding it. <laughs> <laughs> that's part of the yeah that's a that's a core graphics bug leo and <laughs> turns out the cloud is just other people's computers <laughs> <laughs> see you, you hate these jokes that are actually true <laughs> that's I like, love I'm, it. I'm gonna have to remind people of that the cloud really is just other people's computers yeah, you know? just, yeah, it's just so other people's computers anyway that's the most i think recent. meltdown reminded us of that andy xkc yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hell is other people's computers. I think Dorothy oh. uh, Parker said that. Um, let's see. Well, we've got uh, now uh, the big developers conferences from Google, Google I.O. dates. Yeah. We've got build dates. And we may have Apple's not announced WWDC dates. But according uh, to Mac rumors, there is evidence to suggest it may be Monday, June 4th, through Friday, June 8th at the McHenry Convention Center in San Jose. That's where it was held last. Were they, is, they wouldn't do it. Um, I guess the the new Apple's Steve Jobs Theater is just not suitable for the no, WWDC. It's, it's for keynotes, but it's not for developer conferences. Yeah. And they were super happy yep. with McHenry Center last year. So there's every reason in the world to believe yeah. they'll go back. In, in San Jose, you been, need lots of... You need lots of nooks and crannies. You know, this is that's a one big that, that's a several small meeting spaces sort of space. So and uh, Apple does not want five thousand developers just meandering throughout the yeah. park all day. For a if week. they did want to do it at the McHenry Center, which they did last year, they would have to do it in that first week of June because it's booked in the other weeks. Uh, Apple has always done WWDC in June. I mean, they could go back up to the uh, uh, Bill Graham. Auditorium in San Francisco, I guess. I don't know what it's. That was just for the keynotes as well, and then they went to Moscone for the actual Moscone. Conference. That's where they did. And it, they could yeah. they could do anything they want. I mean, they're a huge right. company with unlimited resources. They could have resources. it in the Twin Cities if they wanted to. They, yeah, but they, they could have it in a huge. flotilla in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. You know, but, that would be super this, cool. It's to not have, practical. You, that way, you avoid this. One of the reasons Apple wanted to build the Steve Jobs Theater is so they could have their announcements without the press figuring it out from looking at calendars of local venues. I think they should. They should tie together barges in the San Francisco Bay. <laughs> Nobody would know ahead of time. Didn't Google try that? Well, well yeah, they, they put a well, store on barge. Yeah. Actually, actually, that that would be a very Apple thing to do. Not barges, but if they were to like lease uh, a few cruise ships, so that this is not yeah. this is your living space. Wouldn't and that be cool? Front. But but also it means that like they can, they can control people leaving and coming and going. They can control the internet access. They could have imagine if imagine if if it's like people are stranded on an island of only Apple for an entire week where nobody can tell them what's what's happening on the mainland. No, they can't tell anybody else. They can really spill every single secret, knowing that no one's going to know for not for an entire week. Unless you got scuba gear, uh, I think Motorola Mark Herbert, Mark, Mark Herbert would have would have scuba gear. What would we see at a WWDC? What would Apple talk about? Uh, the operating systems: iOS 12, Mac OS 12.14, Watch OS 5, TV OS 12. We've already, you know, got yeah. the hint from Mark Gurman that they are going to be at least in the iOS space uh, more performance and reliability and stability updates than big new features. Yeah, I think Ina Freed broke that. Uh, um, was it? Oh, uh, that's right. It was Ina Freed. Uh, yeah, you're right. Mark, you're right. Mark followed up on Mark it with on sort it. of specifics. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but that's, yeah. that's sort of, there was a really, uh, we talked about the tweet storm from Sanofsky uh, last week and that, that was sort of built on the back of this and that you don't turn a battleship in a second. And Apple has been last year at WWDC, Craig Federighi, Craig Federighi said they'd altered their plan so that they weren't just doing feature after feature, but they were giving the teams and the individual contributors time to work on the things that really matter to them. And this is sort of an extension of that where they were they were doing a series of sprints. They made the iPhone, they made UI kit, and they were just doing a, like a, marathons of sprints over and over again. And it was a complete grind. And now the mature the, the operating systems are mature and they have different things they have to solve for. And it's it, it, gone are the years where people are like, oh, iOS is not innovating anymore. Android's got all the innovation and Apple felt like they needed to really ramp things up. And now it really it is about adding core features that are super important to where they think the product needs to go, but also taking the time to make sure that the foundations that they're built on are really, really solid. And I, I don't know if they're going to have a secondary team to do that, if the primary team is still working on those new features and there'll be other people who maintain it uh, and solidify it going forward. But it, it just it feels like something that Apple has to invest in heavily now. Would we see any hardware announcements? Maybe that's where we see the Mac Pro. Yeah, yeah it'd be great be to see it. 
it'd be great to see it if we're going to be seeing uh, a new evolution of the of the map books like it's been rumored the past couple of weeks that's going to require some developer support so we might see some teases there um i'm wondering though because since they had such a problem getting uh, getting the home pad rolled out after making that announcement and there was so much tension about the uh, imac pro announcing it in advance and then having to deal with everybody saying every single week is it out yet is it out yet is it out yet <laughs> Maybe that have affected their desire to tease something and actually show something off before they know exactly before the, before it's actually on the barges heading heading their their way west. By the it's way, also interesting about whether they'll have a March event or not because they have March oh. events not every year but several years. They didn't have one last year. Yeah. They had one the year before. And is there stuff ready to have that event this year? And has changed because WWDC is not often about hardware. It's sometimes about hardware, but we've had several years where there's no new hardware at WWDC, and those are often the years where we have March events for Apple Watch or the the 12 inch MacBook uh, or new iPads or something like that. So uh, Apple's going to balance those two things because now that they have the Steve Jobs Theater, they can do exactly what you said, Leo, and that is they can drop a March event without having to coordinate with Yerba Buena no one will know. Or, or anywhere else. Yeah. yeah. Till the minute before. The, yeah. There is a rumor from a Chinese uh, website, qq.com, that the WWDC will be the debut of the iPhone SE 2, which would kind of make sense. This The SE is getting a little long in the tooth. It's the iPhone 5 case with an iPhone 6S guts, right? Yeah, although that could be March too. I mean, there's no reason they have to wait to WWDC for I that. I guess not. So March yeah. would be iPad, not iPhone, obviously, but iPad... Uh, iPad is soon because they had the last iPads at WWDC about nine months ago, and they've yeah. traditionally done twelve to eighteen months for iPads, not right. not always yearly. Okay, so it could Plus, be in the fall, or it could be in June, or it could be in March. Yeah, <laughs> yeah pretty, we, we're, we're covering. Does that so cover it all. Anything <laughs> but December. Anything but December. March March would be March would be a very good time to update the update the lower end MacBooks because that's when a lot of purchasing decisions are being made for fall. Ah. Uh, that's also a good time for uh, iPad rollouts if, uh, if for much the same reason, uh, but also because the uh, it's a good time to make it. If they've made a decision on the larger size iPad Pro, that would be an excellent time to do it, particularly because of their uh, their their branding of the iPads as real computers or so so much better than so much as good as computers that they can't even call them computers anymore. So I wouldn't be surprised to see an iPad announcement or a low end MacBook announcement. Um, Maybe uh, if, if enough for the fact that they made such a big update to the uh, to the Apple Watch uh, so recently, I would be thinking about uh, a big update to that. Maybe they would announce a price drop or a new feature rollout for that uh, even before WWDC. Uh, it's, there's, there's very few things that make a lot of sense for March, but that's the stuff that you're kind of thinking of. Uh, I'd be kind of surprised if it would be if any kind of a new phone because when does it, when does it benefit them to have that released in March as opposed to later in the year? But that's just a guess. So just historically, they did the original iPhone SE um, in, at, at a small town hall event in March a few years ago. And then last year, last year they did the red iPhone uh, 7 which, you know, you don't think that color really matters, but to a lot of people, color really matters. Introducing a new color is like introducing a new design and people get super excited. So a new yeah. color for iPhone 8 or iPhone 10, and especially because this year, the, the the word on the street about the Samsung Galaxy S9 is that it, it is not, it's like a very incremental update. It's not, wow, whiz bang, entirely new design, very similar, very, and they might not want Samsung to sort of own the spring discussion about telephones yeah also the iphone se isn't a fall i'm not i'm thinking of it uh, the iphone se is not something that they're selling in the united states as much as they're selling overseas yeah yeah uh, but it's 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 designed to appeal to people uh, to markets that aren't going for the thousand dollar phones and typically that's not the united states or that's not the u.s and europe so what what event is happening in march that they would like to piggyback onto that's in let's say india where uh, you really have to deliver lots of value for the money in order to have a big success or at least have a have an aftermarket success well we'll look forward to finding out I just want a red iphone 10 so badly leo here is the by iPhone. the way uh, thanks to uh, the chat room naked security sophos.com has the tagulu character that is a sexy character <laughs> i actually now that i think of it i've seen that like on reddit and stuff people obviously are trolling other people by putting that character in there i don't know how you would make what it does that character show mean? up i don't know who speaks tagulu oh i don't know i bet you could could i do translate <laughs> yeah right well i can't uh, so sophos is not stupid 
this is not the actual character. It's a picture of the character. Right. Because if if this were the actual character, my Mac would have crashed. Whoa. I'm sure Google could OCR that right into Assistant, Leo. <laughs> oh, you know, I could try maybe. Actually, you're mm. probably not wrong. Yeah, what if I did, uh, <laughs> does, is Google Lens now? Computer. Now computer. Computer. Tell me what this is. Let's see. Now, now you got me. I, I, I want to know now. Text so, this character to the person who cut me off on the street yesterday morning. Yes, yeah, son of a. Here's the camera. Okay. Tap what you're interested in. I'm interested in that. Your protection. We have. Here's what I found. Yes. What did you find? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Absolutely zilch. Her screen is dirty. Facebook. I found Facebook. I found Facebook, Twit, and a thumbs up. <laughs> Glad you like character it. For thumbs up. <laughs> let me let me try that again. Uh, Google. They have ASCII emoji too, Leo. Tap on what you're interested in. Right there, that. It, it's not translating. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab my Android phone. Is it, it's part of. By the way, we've been saying it wrong. It's Telugu. Sorry about that. Telugu. Sorry. Tele, bad. Telugu. I've been saying it wrong too. Everybody's been saying it wrong. Um. So if you if you haven't updated your Mac, your iOS devices. Did Apple TV and Apple Watch they got updates too? Was that also? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Apple 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 Watch will render Anything. iMessages, so it's important. Sure. To have, sure. Yeah, sure. And once you're updating all the parts, it's just is that all the parts. update was? I mean, was there any? I mean, they they don't know. They're not always. Complete. There was a second fix that they actually put up in the public notes. It wasn't anything uh, major. And then there's the, the usual list of fixes. I but wonder, this was very much a rush and get it out by Monday. Yeah, and we're kind of done with the Spectre meltdown stuff, right? That's. It's it's done as long Every, until people think of new exploits. Right. <laughs> we'll do everything it. that could have been done immediately has been done, and now it's just <laughs> patching new watch, holes in the canoe as the they next. appear. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Apple, I, you will be happy to know, has filed for a trademark for the classic rainbow Apple logo. It's good they got around to it. <laughs> um, it will be. I guess they're going to do the retro stuff. So, well, so maybe. I didn't know the history of this. It was designed to replace the Newton yeah. logo back in 1977. Uh, designer Rob Janoff created it. It lasted 20 years. Steve Jobs replaced it when he came back to Apple in 97 with the monochromatic logo. I didn't realize it's been that long now. They so, have a T-shirt with that logo and cups with that logo for sale at the Infinite Loop Apple Store. They should. Complete, yeah, that's what yeah. that's what I was that's what I was thinking. Now that they're now now that they're uh, again selling products with it, perhaps they want that to be a defensible canonical. Oh, thing. As I, it I, should be. Yeah. The, the question is whether uh, the chicken or the egg question. Did are they creating those T-shirts just so that they can create a stronger trademark? Meaning, hey, look, we're using this commercially. We have not abandoned this mark. Uh, or are they now trademarking because they intended to do more with it? Right. Because that's. Uh, for for a company that is so adamantly against its own nostalgia, it was a great thing to see the color logo back in the Apple store, at least at the, in the mothership store. But I wouldn't be surprised if it was simply, oh, it looks like we won't be able to defend it unless we can say we're about to lose this trademark because people could argue that we've completely abandoned it at this point. I really uh, I really like the rainbow. and it is It has that yeah. great nostalgia. Yeah. What I didn't realize is we have had the other one for 20 years now. Right. Yes. So this was the f Apple's first 20 years. And now the uh, monochrome is the second 20 years. But they still say bleed in six colors. I mean, it hasn't left the Yeah, no, yet. it's very much in our consciousness. And uh, Somebody gave me old Apple stickers, the rainbow stickers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which was so nice to have. And I probably I was shouldn't moving, have, I found but I think box. I put it on a, a laptop. <laughs> <laughs> I should probably have sold it on eBay, but uh, nevertheless. <laughs> to pay for your turntable. Yeah, maybe. Let's take a break. Renee Ritchie, iMore.com, Andy Anako, Chicago Sun Times from the Pixel Core. Mr. Alex Lindsay. Hello, hello. Should I keep the sale a secret? No, <laughs> no, you don't, you don't need to. Okay, keep we'll the sale. talk about that yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. later. We, we'll talk about that. Yeah, it's, it's a big sale. But I want dibs on some of that stuff. Yeah, no, we're, we're, we're inviting everybody to so the they Pixel can, they Core is buy. getting rid of old gear. That a is a it. special time. When and by happens. old, they mean like six months. Is yeah, like right. Old, it's right. not that old. That's <laughs> why I want AK dibs on cameras. Something. It's brand new for me. Yeah. Uh, our show today brought to you by Audible. Oh, I love Audible. I do. Don't you? Everybody does. Audible is the audio bookstore. Audio books are great for helping you grow your brain, entertain you in the car. They have everything. Audio books, but also I, I think people don't know that Audible has original 
programming, news, comedy. Millions of Audible members access performances by entertainers, magazines, amazing narrators. You can now, with the Audible app, send books from your library to anybody. And if it's their first time accepting a book through this feature, they can listen free. You can also share audio excerpts from your favorite listens. I really, I've got to get more in the habit of doing that because I'm always talking about stuff I just read with, with Lisa and friends. And I want to, I can now just send them, listen. In fact, it's frequently I'll be listening to a book. I'm listening right now to The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich. I've been listening to that for a couple of years. It's a long book. Uh, but every once in a while I go, boy, that resonates. That sounds like today. And I want to, I sh I can, I'll start sending those clips out. That's so cool. You can. I know a lot of people listen to our show fast. You can listen faster or slower as you listen if you want. Narrate at the speed that suits you. It, it, because uh, Audible is an Amazon company, it works with your Kindle. If you, can, if you buy the Whisper Sync for voice, you can switch back and forth between reading and listening to an audio book on your Kindle and your Echo without ever losing your place or missing a word. I do that all the time, especially for books where you really want to see the text. Some books I just really need to see the names spelled out, things like that. Audible members get a credit every month for any audio book, regardless of price. Unused credits do roll over. Somebody was asking me. So you can accumulate them. If you don't like your audiobook, no problem. Exchange it with no questions asked. And once you buy a book, it's yours forever. With Audible, you can go back and re-listen any time. I have uh, in my, I've been an Audible member since 2000. So I have in my library hundreds, hundreds of books. I just started listening to, uh, so uh, Bill Gates wrote a blog post on his favorite book. And this used to be his favorite book by Steven Pinker. The Better Angels of Our Nature, Why Violence Has Declined. It's actually a very optimistic, positive book, so I, I like reading something positive. And now the new book just came out uh, last week, Enlightenment Now, and this is Bill Gates' new favorite book, The Case for Reason, Science, Humanism, and Progress. If you've been listening to a lot of books that are depressing, like Everybody Lies, Big Data, New Data, and What the Internet Could Tell Us About Who We Really Are, maybe you want to Refresh yourself with something a little optimistic by Steven Pinker. Of course, great science fiction, fiction of all kinds at audible.com. Anybody who have a pick, something they're listening to, they want to tell us about? Yeah, I just, as a matter of fact, I got a little behind. Um, I subscribe, so I get, uh, an, I get an Audible uh, credit every single month. And so I just was asking people yesterday to recommend one book. And one of the ones I bought... Uh, it was uh, a gentleman in Moscow by oh, Amor Towels. It's I just bought that too. Yeah, just just based on the description. Yeah, and I'll just I'll just read the description. In 1922, Count, Count Alexander Rostov is deemed an un, unrepentant as aristocrat by a Bolshevik tribunal and is sentenced to house arrest in the Metropole, a grand hotel across the street from the Kremlin. Rostov, an indomitable man of erudition and wit, has never worked a day in his life and must now live in an attic room while some of the most tumultuous decades in Russian history are unfolding outside the hotel's doors. So funny like, that you oh, bought that. Okay. You I got it. Yeah. I am very excited. I can't wait to read this. Have you started it? Uh, no, I'm going to start it t today with my after I go for my walk. This you could also get, by the way, the Kindle version and have the Whisper Sync for voice working on it. Let's listen to a little I'm sample. Mildly surprised by the question, had the good training to maintain the evenness of his effect. I am here to show you to your quarters. These are my quarters. <laughs> uh, Nicholas Guy Smith doing the narration. Artable's narrators are the best. Just love them. Just love them. But I know some people, when we talk about audiobooks, say, I don't know, can I listen to a book? Is it going to be the same experience as reading? So we get you a free audiobook with a 30-day free trial when you go. Actually, I want you to do this new one. Get your phone out and text MACBREAK, M-A-C-B-R-E-A-K, to 500-500. That's the Audible short code. They'll just send you a link. That's how easy that is. 500, 500 text Mac break, or you can still go to audible.com slash Mac break, A U D I B L E dot com slash Mac break, Mac break. Free audio book with a 30 day free trial. What are you listening to? Um, I am listening to How the West Was Lost Ooh. by Dambiso Moyo. This is a problem. Yeah. I have so many books I want to listen to. Yeah. That sounds great. Jeez, I, I pretty it's much history. read anything. It's, well, it's, it's actually, um, this is actually about, economies um and uh um dembiso moyo is 
one of my oh, favorite authors. When she it doesn't comes mean to the economic. cowboy West. No. She means us now. <laughs> the Western world. Yeah, and she really digs into it. I and agree so with her. Um, I think uh, China is about to uh, march right in. I well, can't. it gets really into the details of, of the issues that we've had in the past and how we've structured things and so on and so forth. And it's a, it's a um, uh, she's out of actually, um, I believe she's out of Uganda. And um, she's a former consultant for the World Bank. Yeah. Investment banker in uh, emerging markets at Goldman Sachs. Yeah, really. Oh, this sounds cool. She's okay. amazing. And she's so got a couple you, books. But. When this happens to you, as it often does, and I've run out of credits now because I've bought all the books I could buy, I'm going to add that to my wish list. Yeah, it's good. And then when you when you then get a credit every month, you can go to your wish list. My my date is the 22nd, so I'm a couple of days I'm going to get to... These are all the books I have on my wish list, though. <laughs> my dad, my dad's listening to Grant right now, the new Grant. Oh, I hear that's wonderful. He said it's just amazing. Ron Chernow's auto, auto yeah. a biography of uh, Grant. I really want to listen to this because I'm a fan of Bill James. If you're a baseball fan, you'll know about Bill James. He created Saber Metrics. He was the statistician that really revolutionized baseball, and he's written a, a book using Saber Metrics, using stat statistics to solve a century-old serial killer, and he believes he solved this. So I can't, I cannot wait to read the man from the train. Anyway, you can see we have a problem. We have an audible problem. And and <laughs> too many to books, say, I, too little time. I don't. This is the only way I actually read books. Oh yeah, I don't or, read or anymore. Quote unquote. I read fall books. asleep. I, no, I, I, well, I I don't believe really in. I, I, I there are times when I monotask, but I but on something like this, I love to oh, multitask. I love to be cleaning yeah. my cleaning my house, doing my doing my uh, yard work, yep. doing those types of things while listening to a to a book is is the perfect. Uh, Perfect well, we've just gave book. given you like <laughs> hours <laughs> to listen to it. Your first one's free at audible.com slash MacBreak or text MacBreak to 500-500. If you have a choice, do the, do the latter one. I think they're testing this out. They want to see if people uh, like the idea of uh, texting to their short code. MacBreak to 500-500. Show them how the power of the MacBreak audience. <laughs> Fast Company uh, today selected Apple. As the most innovative company in the world. <laughs> wow. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. That and $2 to get you a cup of coffee. <laughs> Bill Schiller's ass was incredibly happy. Uh, courage, my friends. Innovation, my you-know-who. Um, I think that, you know, Apple's certainly right in there. I know, I, you know, I, absolutely. Absolutely. I wonder how the HomePod's doing. I mean, the regardless of the, how it does as a product, the computational audio and the computational photography and all those things it's are innovative technology yeah. that I think we'll we'll see expand as time goes on. It's it's a, a typical Apple product where it's it's kind of a hint as to where Apple's going. It sounds it's so a different good. way of doing things. Yeah, you like the sound? I love it. Yeah, I you know, and it's I think that it's not. So I have a um, in my office, uh, I have um, already a pretty good stereo system built into it, um, but it's really surround sound for my for my. Uh, for my for my TV, um, and so it's really loud and it feels good. You know when you're watching movies and everything else. But what I was amazed by was the HomePod was so much clearer. Like I just felt like I could hear every instrument. You know there was something there wasn't. It was just this. And so now everything sounds muddy. Like after you're used to listening to it. Like so I, yes. I find myself listening to it for hours. And then I turn on, you know, there's speakers in a it's lot like of It's like putting rooms. on glasses and seeing the world and then yep. you take them off and it's... Yeah. And, and the problem like is, that, is that I have this, you know, like I, you know, the house that, that I bought happened to already have a bunch of speaker systems. I didn't put them in, uh, in a lot of the rooms. And I uh, I now walk around and I, you know, put them in the living, turn on the living room speakers or whatever. And you're like, ah, oh, it's a little, it's a little muddy. You know, like, it's, <laughs> it, you know, and I didn't, it, it was sounded great yeah, until well, I got the whole you, doesn't it? Yeah. it, it you know, it's just a, and I'm already ready to like buy a second one once they get the stereo thing working. Cause I, I have a feeling that it'll be amazing, you know, but it's, I think that it's, uh, um, with songs that really take advantage of it. I did find that I had to go back to Spotify and, and up the ante on all the, I can start hearing the compression. So you don't mind using the live the uh, air airplay to play the music uh, Spotify, yeah there's, it's a to. little delayed but it's yeah. otherwise it was fine I, I didn't um all my playlists are on spotify so it was just really hard to i use so i use apple music really only to request songs you know like i just want to play i just why don't pick, you make playlists on apple music is it not as uh, it's just that i have a lot of, i mean i have like you just done i have like 80 it. playlists yeah. on on spotify and i haven't gotten around to to moving them and um for some reason i like i find things faster like the other th i find it's faster for me to kind of build a playlist on Spotify than it is on Apple Music. And so it's just, um, anyway, that's why I do it. 
Mm. I don't have a strong opinion about it, but I really just got into the habit. Apple Music came late, you know, and so, which we talked about a lot. Yeah. So. <laughs> New, uh, here's another one for you, you to debunk, Renee. Shares fall. By the way, I don't know how much they fell or whether they're still falling, but shares fall on fresh report of even greater reductions in iPhone 10 production. This is uh, the the whisper rumor from Nikkei that uh, Samsung is planning to make twenty make displays for twenty million or fewer iPhone 10 units. Uh, let me just see if Apple's you know I think Apple shares falling means. The, at the moment they wrote that story. Oh, well, maybe yes. Okay, there you go. So this is the one day. It's not, you know, a huge no. blip if you look at five days or one month. It's uh, still higher than it's been since uh, January 23rd, it looks like. Uh, all right. But if we look at, like, let's let's go back to the yeah, one year. It's like, uh, it's, it has there was its a dip, ups and downs. There was this big dip uh, at the beginning of the month. Was that the same rumor? Well, that was. I think it was a lot of dips in the beginning of the month. <laughs> yeah, that was the stock market, right? Everything yeah. was yeah. going down. It reminds me of what that what that uh, market maker said was it two weeks ago that Apple Apple should really only move when it reports earnings and announces new products and everything else is manufactured. That's a wow. That's perfect. That's exactly right. Right. The rest of it is speculation. And you never know because like DK has DK has a great reputation, but they've also published articles that had absolutely no foundation in the past. And Samsung is a wonderful company, but they've also been known to leak stories because they they right. didn't get the contract they wanted, or they wanted to put pressure on the contract, or they wanted to move the the like they were negotiating, they wanted to move the price of NAND flash. I mean, so like you have to take all this stuff with a grain of salt. And again, Apple had a huge quarter, and they traditionally sell less in the quarter after the holidays than they do in the quarter with the holidays. So. From now on, I'm just going to build these stories as a buying opportunity. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Also, also, I think I can't think of any other company whose CEO at, during a shareholders meeting has suggested that shareholders sell their Apple stock if they're unhappy, uh, and that's happened I think more than once yeah. with Tim Cook's meetings. Yeah. So everybody knows that Apple is a long-term hold stock. That if you're if you're going to react that quickly to an unsourced article somewhere. Yeah, this is not the stock for you. You'll be happier <laughs> investing in vinyl or something. <laughs> Commodities. What uh, What would you do to improve the iPhone 10? I'd reduce the price for one. Yeah. And by um, the way, the I, other uh, rumor is that Samsung's S9 will be about a hundred bucks more than last year. So Samsung is looking at Apple's pricing, saying, "Yeah, we can charge more." Yeah, the the, the, the announcement is going to come probably next week. Sunday. At, uh, at, Sunday. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and so, by the way, we'll be streaming that live. I think nine a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. Nice. Uh, we're going to be doing the live stream of the Samsung announcement. I'm sure they'll announce a price then. What are they? Where, yeah. Oh, you're doing it from here. It's at Mobile World Congress. We're not going to go. Maybe a price. Maybe a street date. You never know with Samsung. It's always entertaining, though. That's a good point. Sometimes they do leave the price out, don't yeah. they? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, but, but hey, one of the malls is going to be purple. I'd be happy to see a purple, <laughs> a purple iPhone. I'm not, I'm not oh, even kidding. A purple kidding. iPhone it's 10. Like, that's where. Yes. <laughs> I don't want a purple phone. So. Like Samuel Jackson's lightsaber. And ironically, it doesn't really matter because everybody puts a case on those, right? I mean, you'd be. Although yeah. I read a great yeah. article, a guy said, "I really don't want to put a case on this." I have to admit, when I when I take the iPhone out, it's I so love beautiful having it out the case. I don't right? have a case. But on I'm always like, "Cool, we got to put it back in, nice and safe." Renee, you you do it without a case, huh? Most of the time, if I have to review a case, then I put one on for a while. But it's most not of the, time the back. It. That really sends me on this. I just took my case off. It's the stainless on the white one anyway. Yeah. The stainless steel uh, border. The, is yeah, really it looks beautiful. like the original. I just, it's so pretty. It really, you know, it really does deliver that sort of okay. This is why I spent a thousand dollars on this phone experience. It doesn't look cheap. It doesn't look compromised in any way. I am, I am that person who, no matter what the phone is, it will go in a case. Probably because I take so many pictures with it. I just like to have these like rubber grips so that if I'm trying to get an angle like this, I don't have to worry about dropping inside a fountain. Uh, and th I mean, the number of times that I've <laughs> had like a, a phone, especially especially when it's a loaner phone, if I know that I'm going to be loaned a phone for uh, for two months, I'm going to be carrying it around every day for a month. I will sp I will spend twenty dollars of my own money to put it in a case because. You know, all that has to happen is once, and then you're like, why did I not spend twenty dollars for a case? Yeah, it was Nick Stat writing in The Verge who's saying, I don't want to I don't want to use my uh, my iPhone in a case. Yeah. There was a great article, I think it was in The Verge, let me see if I can find it, about um, the notch. Yeah, I think this is it. Brad Ellis, who's an interaction designer at Tall West, yeah. talks about 
and this is an example of how Apple fanboys really, <laughs> and I'm one, really going to go way overboard. He says, you know, this notch, it's, this is, this is better than you think. <laughs> First of all, he shows how bad it would look if they just put squared corners. But then he, he talks about other ways to do rounded corners. And then he talks about the squircle, which is Apple's yep. very special. And notice, by the way, now, not only is there a rounded corner on the edge, on the outside, but the inside is rounded on the notch. And he says there is no point on this curve that you could get a tangent that's a straight line. It's, it's uh, well, I guess non-trivial engineering to fill yeah. that. Yeah. Right. Here he shows the difference between, uh, and it's hard to see, but it's an animated uh, gif between a rounded rectangle and an iPhone oh, 10. Yeah. Can you see the shoulders on the rounded rectangle coming up a little bit? But the iPhone 10, so it's not a rounded rectangle; it's a squircle. And that, and that is not easy to do. You, I mean, yeah. people don't make screens with squircles. Well, they do when yeah. an Apple comes. Yeah, I mean, that's that's lovely. <laughs> I'm sure the people who love... Uh, I don't, I'm sorry. I'm it's gonna, a designer. I'm, 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 you I'm, understand I'm, I'm, how designers are, right? They just can't. Yeah, but there, well, there's, <clears throat> I, I, there, there's a somewhat rude word that I use internally. Yes, I know about, what word you're going to and, and, I won't, and I, won't, I won't use it, but it's yes. like... I'm gl oh. I'm glad that as someone with a really really sharp eye for design, no no not and I don't and I don't mean for necessarily for the designer. I'm talking about okay, you are basing. Uh, I, I, I want to make sure I phrase this correctly. It's, it's like it's nice that you notice these things. I wonder if you had phone A with some with some straight lines in it, and phone B the way that the the Apple Apple actually designed it. Would anybody who's actually using the phone Really care. Here's the, here's the problem. Says though, it's, it's, it's just, it's, it just, it just, it just doesn't interest me. It's deep all. nerd, deep deep design nerd talk. He, even, but, he admits to that. Right? But there's I a should, lot I of things. Point out that there's a um, lot of Brad things. Is, like, go ahead, Renee. First, and then we'll get. No, I was going to say I should point out that Brad is a huge fan of the show. So hi, I, I'm a fan of Brad Ellis. I um, follow him on Twitter, he, he and I love this article. Phenomenal. So, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I had a conversation with Brad about this. We did an I, a designing for iPhone 10 uh, roundtable with uh, Brad and Sebastian Dewitt. And a bunch of other really interesting designers. And when you look at the apps that they've been making since then, there's an absolute case for having a straight line. It's it's really nice. But it's not that Apple sort of put an envelope on top and took away your screen real estate. That would all have been gone. What they did is sort of open up these corners. And it looks weird at first, but then you have suddenly a little bit of extra screen. And when you look at apps like Apollo for Reddit or Halide for um, – the photography app Halide, they put things like histograms in there or volume controls and there or ISO images in there. And it's like complications on the watch. It's just a little bit extra. Yeah. And yeah, in a perfect world, there'd be no bezel on any phone ever, but Samsung can't do that. Google can't do that. LG can't do that. So I think this this is an interesting way of tackling the problem. It, it sort of gives you that little bit bonus uh, screen and lets them make the marketing claim that it's edge to edge. But um, Brad is absolutely one of the people that notices everything about the typography to the pixel um, anti-aliasing. And, and the truth is, I think that while people don't explicitly notice this, I think so, you might feel like it you know, looks better. The, the the issue really gets into when you talk about design is what we call subconscious detail. Yes. So the right. subconscious detail is something that you don't see. You can't quite figure out why this looks better than that. But it looks, it just feels like when you look at it, yeah, no one's going to notice that it's there. Um, but it is, it's this overall feeling that takes, and and that's all the work. And that last like 1% is the difference between, you know, something like Apple and something like almost every other Android phone and everything else out there is, I mean, there's a handful of like the Google Pixel that, that really starts to work on that, uh, some of the Samsung phones, but the rest of them fall off pretty quickly because they're not doing that, you know, and, so hard. and, and we can't tell. We can't tell, like, as a user, you can't say, I don't know what the difference is, but just one feels cheaper than the other one. And, it, yeah, and it's, it's all those it's subtle. super subtle yeah. little details of curves and everything else. And, um, uh, you know, I've worked with definitely designers who can really articulate, like, like was articulated in this article, but can really articulate the difference between those things. And they have a whole, they have a vision of like, you know, they, they see colors also that I don't see. I'm like, it's green and it's red. It's, you know. Or like, one frame like, dropping in an animation. You know, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I can see the, the and, and of course you don't see it. You don't see it yourself until somebody well, we, tells we you, and then you then you can't not you can't unsee it. It's well, like your HomePod experience. And, and you deal every business. Ha every co business has this. You know, it might be the way. You know, someone might be speaking good English, but do they sound like they're intelligent or not? That's very subtle use of words. How they structure their sentences. It's exactly yeah. the same thing. You know, when we do 
live streams. We, you know, good video means that you watch longer. You don't know why the average viewer doesn't know that. They just go, they just stopped, they got bored and they moved on. They didn't notice that the camera angles weren't very good or the, you know, like all of those things. And so with all of these things, there's these subtle details that experts will, they are thinking about these things. Like that curve that he's talking about, I guarantee there were meetings. <laughs> there yes. were a lot of meetings yeah. and there were a lot of designs. There's probably a hundred versions of that little close up that were, that were worked on before they spent, you know, and getting millions. the hardware to do it is again incredibly well, difficult. And that's not, a, that's not, a yeah. huge point, which is you know only Apple. In fact, Stephen Sanofsky, <laughs> he of the uh, Windows 8 fame and the in the long Twitter uh, post about the iOS, underlined this paragraph from Brad's article. One of the things I love about indie apps is their ability to be opinionated. It's nearly impossible to ship strong viewpoints from larger companies where there are 50 people in a room examining angles. So it's cool to see Apple still has the ability to take a strong stance in this way. And, of course, they have the market cloud to get vendors to build screens. They do so much of their own silicon now, like custom controllers and All custom, right. like they did a lot of stuff on that screen beyond the panel they got from Samsung. And most companies just don't have the resources. So are we okay with the notch? I mean, it seems to have disappeared yeah, I mean, as, a, as an issue. It drove me crazy for the, the first two weeks. And now I'm like, totally fine with it. In fact, it feels like see it yeah, I don't notice it, except I know where to go. <laughs> the funny thing is I know exactly where I want to scan to get to my notifications and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, as it, as it turns out, and maybe this is making lemonade out of lemons, but as it turns out, having those ears is as you pointed out renee and halide and other programs but on the on the front page it's just useful to know that's where that's where those are going to be in fact it drives me crazy now because on my i, know, right? I, I go to my ipad and i that the, the control panel is mm -hmm. not there yeah you know, oh, I, have to I mean it's Edge to edge would be much better if they if it really was just a frame with the screen but again no company can do that yet and this is as good a compromise well, as, I have a Samsung Note 8, and the way they avoid it, they have a, you know, they just don't go yeah. all the way to the top of the screen. Um, they have a bar that's, that's yeah, you know, they're, they're it's of, fine. Yeah, there, there, there are a lot of different ways to solve this problem. Uh, the, I, I did like the uh, the essential phone just simply saying, we're just going to have hard corners everywhere. Uh, and there is, they weren't they weren't putting as much on that front screen as Apple was, certainly, but at least having a selfie camera saying, you know what, there's going to be a deal with it. There's going to be some missing pixels around a circle at the very top of the screen uh, that will have the opening for light sensors and the uh, and the uh, and the camera and just deal with it. So I think that it really is interesting seeing how uh, engineering and design continue to have a master slave relationship that keeps flip-flopping from time to time where it says look there is the form factor we want to have you're going to have to make this panel fit versus look we have to we have to put a 3d face scanning camera in here you're going to have to figure out a way to adapt uh, you get, here, here's where the hardware has to go. You have to figure out how to adapt uh, something else to make that fit. So some, you, you give a designer, you give an engineer a set of limitations. It's their job to work through them. And it's always interesting to see how they deal with it. And I think that with Essential, they said, if we can't, if we can't really do round, let's do, let's really embrace corners right. everywhere. Right. And they made it a beautiful phone. Apple said, we can't really have any way to have an uninterrupted piece of glass from corner to corner, edge to edge. So let's make that instead of trying to hide it or apologizing for it, let's make that as well integrated and as intentional and purposeful as we possibly can. I have to say My though, uh, we know the numbers now for the essential phone and they've sold less than 90,000 <laughs> total. Yeah. Um, uh, I think but it's a beautiful phone. I really, honestly do. I bought one, and I really, at full price, by the way, not the 500 bucks they ended up settling on. Uh, and I think it's a gorgeous phone, but... Yeah, it's, a, it's gorgeous. Uh, you know, but it just goes to show you that part of it is you have to tell people that these things are for sale. Yeah. That I don't I don't think that... Well, there were a uh, lot of not, fumbles for Essential. Well, they didn't have the carry relationships, and Android yeah. Central was never happy with the software. Yeah. The, the fin finishing right. I mean, but... Either, so. But but uh, you also it's just that there are also other way more sophisticated, way more sophisticated, way more established brands that it's like how do you expect to uh, to have a really good presence in America if you're not willing to buy a bus a bus ad every now and then? How much if you're not willing to again pay off the local phone stores to give your phones good placement in the store? It's 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 very. It, I tend to think that oh well this is this is one of the greatest phones ever. Everybody should have one. This is going to be the most popular thing ever. But it's like. Unless, unless you know, two hundred million people are listening to me, which they're not, no one's going to know about this thing. Um, yeah, and actually, while we might say that Apple's success comes from sweating the details and sub, you know, subliminal uh, reinforcement, it also has a lot to do with market clout, the ability to get in stores, 
<laughs> they, they have a couple ads. stores. I only had a couple stores. stores you, know. you know, I mean, well, I mean for, for phone companies, it's carrier relationships. I mean, that's what kept Blackberry. They have every for a long carrier. Time. No carrier. Yeah. It's funny because Apple launched right with just one carrier. They couldn't get Verizon turned And Andy Rubin had a huge history. I mean, his history going back to the Sidekick with uh, Sprint, and right. I think it was with Sprint. Was it, no, it's T-Mobile. It was a Sidekick. And then he did the original Android phones, and he had great relationships. But I, it always felt to me like it was a bit of a ploy to get – because the rumor is that Google wants an iPhone badly. That's why they're working on the Pixel. But they, they, he could have sold like, – it felt a little bit like this was, hey, buy my phone, take me back, all, you know, all's uh, forgiven, and we'll make a great product together. Yeah. And it, for a variety of reasons, that just didn't happen. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Pixel went – I mean, I love the Pixel 2 XL, but in every respect, when you <laughs> – the design is – no, I mean, it's just not, it's not a gorgeous phone. It's a functional. It's their second, uh, yeah. it's it's a their high, second phone. It's a highly functional phone. Well, see, that, that's where design is so, uh, so many different ingredients. I, I think that one of the strengths of the Pixel 2 is, and you've covered it up with stickers, the fact that let's not <laughs> just have a boring single tone case. Let's have a dot, let's have a panda. We'll have the top of it be white. We'll have the bottom of it be black. And let's have a phosphorescent uh, orange uh, sleep wake button on it. That is so cool as far as I'm concerned. And like, and Renee and I have been talking <laughs> for different products saying, I, if all that, all that, all that Apple has to do is come up with a red version of the iPhone 10. I really want a red iPhone 10. Just like if just like I hate to say it, but if it were kind of close between switching back to the next iPhone or the next Pixel phone and the iPhone came in a really good like flake metal purple as a limited edition, <laughs> that's that yes. I, it's it's weird, but that might be enough to tip the scales that it's it's close. I could be very happy with either one of them. I really love that baked on purple metal flake finish, yeah. and I don't care if I do have to wait in line for 2 days to get it. I want it. That's interesting. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm kind of I don't know. I I okay, think pers personal, personal, the, taste. personal taste. Personal taste. Personal taste. That's fine. I, 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 I'm not I looking do, for I, gaudy. I mean, yeah, black and white with orange buttons interesting and I did in fact wait 3 weeks longer. It matches your watch to get this here. one. <laughs> but <laughs> Um, I don't know. Yeah. I do. I, I do have to say, a pers personal subjective opinion. That I think the iPhone 10 is the most beautiful phone it's as incredible. a static object yeah. anywhere. That yeah. it is. It really is gorgeous. It just. It just goes to show that for some people, if you're if you're in for a penny and for a pound, they much rather they're okay with spending extra hundred and fifty dollars to get something that for something they're going to be looking at, taking out of their pockets and putting into their pockets for the next two or three years. That's not a whole lot of money to spend, as far as they're concerned. Yeah. You know, I have both, and I carry both. And I have to say, when I want to take a picture, I almost always pull the Pixel out, as opposed to the iPhone. I'm um, really, yeah, I'm really torn between the two, because uh, I, I also there's advantages with both. I agree with you. We actually did a, I, I love, a whole segment yeah. from DP Review on Saturday on the new screensavers about computational photography and the, and what iPhone and Pixel are doing. Yeah, I mean, I, I love I love the quality of the pictures that the Pixel takes, particularly with the way that uh, uh, that the Google camera app does HDR plus. I really think that they've got the edge over Apple's HDR, and especially the way that it works just automatically. I do think that gives it a real edge. Uh, and I just I just tried the new version of the camera app that has added additional panorama modes. So now you can do fish eyes. You can do sometimes you don't just want left to right, but you also want to get the ceiling and the, just the, the ceiling because that's part of that the, part of the artwork uh, in a mural that you want to get uh, all these other modes. But the uh, so whereas I like the quality of the photos I'm getting from the Pixel, I really wish I had the larger photo ecosystem of the yes, iPhone. That's true. Because it's just it, every time there's a little, it's it's like when you buy a camera, like a, a physical camera platform, because ooh, there's this amazing lens that you can't get for. It's kind of unusual; you can't get it for any other platform. That will they'll swerve you towards the Sony or towards the Olympus. The fact that there's all these amazing little apps that just make photography so much more interesting for you, just at that moment. Uh, I, I I can't decide between the two. I can't I can't I can't really recommend one over the other. And it's the, I, it makes me wish for this magical world where Google and Apple never had their split up because it, to me, like the iPhone is still an arguably better hardware. And you can tell 
because you know as much as Google says you don't need two lenses to do portrait mode, they're doing almost everything in software. They're taking a little bit of pixel of um, parallax data from the focus pixels, and they're doing incredible segmentation masking and machine learned blur responses. But they don't get depth data, and if the iPhone gets a ton of depth data, and if Google would make that photo app for the iPhone, I bet it would be phenomenal because you'd have like the power of those two lenses or that true sense cam that true depth camera plus all of Google's machine learning. You could just take it and swap it. Where if you put like the Apple camera app on on the Google Pixel, I don't think you'd have much of anything and that shows me that you have there's just so much potential uh, I, I would you, you can never graft a better lens on the pixel but you can grasp better software onto the iphone and i hope that my one wish for the next pixel is that they start throwing cameras on those things that are like apple quality or, or samsung quality like the yeah. actual I, glass I, I love to see the fight between these two companies. So one argument would be that, well, great, as soon, uh, uh, Google can certainly source some sort of depth sensor or some sort of a better uh, twin uh, twin camera arrangement for the next generation of hardware. You can also make the arrange make the argument that Apple is getting better and better at machine learning at learning the sort of tricks that Google is uh, talking about. Partly because all this stuff is being published. It's not as though these are trades. Most of the stuff is not necessarily trade secrets. There's a lot of work being done to make sure that uh, that uh, uh, the rising tide uh, elevates all boats. As a matter of fact, just a couple of weeks ago, Google actually did something that, that was so very Google. It's such a nice positive like industry positive gesture that you wonder what their evil hidden intent is they released like a huge data set of uh i was, I was just talking about how much i like their hdr plus algorithm how, how it generates really good natural hdr so they released a huge data set of some four thousand individual images uh so you get in this if you download this data set you get the final hdr plus image Plus, you get the source images that the that the phone shot to get that, an intermediate image as well. So you can actually test your own algorithms against the result that Google's algorithms are getting. So their desire is to say, well, at least if in research, at least let's have a common framework to discuss how well these uh, algorithms work. Here is a so when you're publishing a paper, you can say I've I've used a Google HDR data set number four four one for this. So now, if you want to create your own version of this algorithm, you can test your own results against it so hopefully it will just continue to become better and better and better cameras i mean i i, I can say enough i can i can give no stronger <laughs> endorsement for the pixel and the iphone than the fact that like a year and a half ago i bought like a 600 hundred dollar pocket camera for all those just for all those times where i didn't want to take like my big interchangeable lens camera and there's so few times that i'm actually like take charging up and taking me taking it with me because i am having i'm getting so many good results just with this darn phone it's sickening to me. I, I find that the, the the only time I really think about taking a camera with me is when I'm uh, going to shoot um, with a long lens. You know, if, I, if I've got yep. like a one yeah, to 400. Yeah, that is one thing no phone does very well. Like if, if my kids are playing sports or something, I'll have a, I have a one to 400 yeah. with a 2X converter and you're going to be outside and I'm going to get close-ups, you know, from where the I'm going to really sitting. encourage everybody's interest in this subject to read uh, Rishi uh, Sanyal's uh, review at DP Review. Uh, he was on, as I said, on uh, the new screensavers on Saturday. And, you know, this is kind of what he said. He's, you know, he's a serious photographer. He has an A7R uh, three, the latest, greatest phone from Sony. He does some comparisons. For instance, here's the where the iPhone wins is in the contour lighting uh, of the same picture of his daughter. But, uh, you know, here's a comparison, full frame or Pixel 2. He said, I can pick out the difference. But the point is, you can get this shot right out of the phone without thinking about it another example he said i took this shot uh oops i zoomed in a little bit let's go back on the pixel 2 uh and i didn't do anything in order to get a better shot arguably better shot with a full frame sensor camera i had to take out a polarizing lens and you know on and on and on uh four stop reverse graduated neutral density filter and a dynamic range compensation mode to get a usable image that's where the hdr plus in some of these cameras is quite remarkable this is a good good article he he basically says the same thing we've been saying which is you know there's advantages uh, in the iphone 10 there's advantages in the pixel 2 they're both doing amazing things and with the exception of perhaps you know specialized situations like a, a long telephoto man uh it's it's pretty amazing here's here's the uh, he did a he has they have a studio chart that they use and if you compare uh, the Pixel 2 image with the Micro Four Thirds image, 
because it's doing, even though the sensor is one ninth the size, because it's doing nine images in one frame, it's getting very close to the resolution of a micro four thirds camera. That's remarkable. Yeah, that's remarkable. I, I was at I was up at um, Starbucks up in up in uh, the the reserve one of their their reserve breweries. I guess they have oh, yeah. that they've started to open, which is by the way for coffee. Oh my gosh, yep. or beer. No, it's it's a, it's a it's a it's a it's a I'm sorry, roastery. It's a it's a uh, <laughs> you get confused with the brewery. brewery. <laughs> no, no, it's it's a up in Seattle. They have a Starbucks roastery, which is like the Willy Wonka's factory Ooh. for coffee. I mean, mm. so I got this kind of crazy <laughs> orangey coffee thing and uh, and a sandwich, and I took this with with portrait mode, and I was oh, I that is gorgeous. Where is that? That's, can I show that on this yeah, screen? It's on Instagram, but you can. Uh, That's amazing. Let me get. Let me pull it up. Well, and I have to admit, it was it was it was the portrait, like the studio mode or whatever in portrait. I took a picture of something. I was just curious. I just like spun through it. See what happens. Like, yeah, let's Good see what Lord, happens. That's gorgeous. And that was, you know, that was like I, I snapped it when I took a picture. I was like, what? So <laughs> that wasn't of a person. It was. It, it somehow likes your quest sandwich. Yeah, it was a quest sandwich, <laughs> and it's. I was corrected that it's not a sandwich. It's some kind of other. Oh, thing. I don't know what it is, but I want <laughs> it. It was really good. I'm going I'm there. Like by the way, if, if you're ever in Seattle, this roastery, like it is, kind of the most amazing coffee shop uh, and bread and bakery and thing that I've ever been to. But it takes really good. Like literally, that's with the portrait mode, like the studio mode. This and looks I didn't like expected. This looks like a Rembrandt. The lighting is so interesting. And it was literally like just sitting on a table. And That's like, what Rembrandt did. He'd have light. these dark images, but then yeah. things would glow. They would have an inner light. Almost like exactly. they were lit inside. Yeah. yeah. No, it was it was literally like I just I literally snapped it. Wow. And it's like it's like you know the lighting in the store. I mean, it wasn't anything. That, that's it, actually one of the things that's most amazing about uh, computational photography and camera phones. Yeah. They surprise you. Yeah. Yeah. That sometimes you get a cool. shot, you go, what? And that's what I start. I've started now, especially after this, I, I start spinning through all those settings and taking photos just, just to see like what's going to happen. Yeah. Oh, that's my, that's uh, and that's shot with my iPhone as well. That's, that's gorgeous. That's, that's, the, that's the same that's thing HDR. as the music is that they do the, they do the science behind it and then they give it to their artistic photography team and they do things like, well, let's not just have normal noise. Let's find it a really appealing grain pattern yeah. if we have to have noise yeah. and let's not just do a Gaussian blur. Let's do a custom disc blur when we're, yeah. and let's treat the lights this way. I mean, a perfectionist might say, well, there's halos oh, yeah. around the sandwich and around the, the coffee and blah, blah, blah. But you know what? That's not the initial impression is, wow. Right, exactly, yeah. and, and the thing is, I'm not. I, that's my. It's an Instagram photo that I took while I was while, while I was on the. I was I was talking on the phone on a conference call, and I took that yeah. picture. It wasn't like I, I was doing an ad. Was on a conference call. I wasn't doing an ad agency, you yeah. know, thing. So yeah. see, the other thing is that these features get people engaged in photography, as opposed to just taking yeah. snapshots. Where I, I've I I have my I have my uh, my visual receipt of the fact that grandma was here at lunch. People can actually get dramatically good results by doing dramatically simple things. Like, uh, I'm not a huge fan of portrait mode because um, I'm because I, I often really shows the artifice in work, but that's just a per that's just a, a my personal thing. Uh, but the fact that people can think, "Ooh, I'll use portrait mode on this instead of just being a passive click, a great, we got it." Saying, "Let's see how good a picture we can take," and then that leads to people asking themselves, "What do what is it that I like about a photo, and how can I enhance that uh, in the pictures that I take?" And that's what turns you into a photo nut. Let's take a, a little break, and we're going to have some feel good stories and some fun stories. And then, of course, our picks all coming nice. up. And the sale. Oh, and, and, and Alex has some very interesting news. But I already sale. put dibs on one of your cameras. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but first, a word about sleeping better. Sleep is everything. Sleep is the best way to lose weight, to reduce stress, to feel better, to literally improve your health. And it all starts with a great mattress from Casper. Award-winning mattresses. For your best rest. Ooh, this is our new Casper we just got. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you got the video. <laughs> this has become a, a ritual here he's, at the Laporte he's household. He's so excited. He already has his pajamas I on. Start he does not want to have to wait one I second. I start in my jammies. <laughs> I love these Caspers because they come in surprisingly compact boxes. When you open them up, though, whoosh, they go to full size. And it is the most perfect combination of bounce and support that you've ever had. Oh, I love my I love my Casper. Oh, you're going to love your Casper to the the best bed for better sleep. 
The original Casper mattress combines supportive memory foams for a sleep surface with just the right sink and just the right bounce, plus its breathable design. I really majorly appreciate this because, you know, it's winter. We got the heat on in the house. I don't want to sleep hot, and the mattress sleeps cool, which allows you to regulate your temperature through the night, and you sleep better. Long-lasting comfort and support. Even the kitty loves Casper. <laughs> you can buy it easily. Oh, that's Samantha. Samantha loves it. Uh, you can buy it easily online, completely risk-free. They understand you want to try a mattress before you buy it. That's why, because you're going to spend a third of your life on it. That's why they offer free delivery and painless returns in the first 100 days. So you don't have to lie down in a showroom. You can actually try it in your life. One of the reasons this works is nobody ever returns a Casper. You just you're just gonna love it. Free shipping and returns, if you want it, to the U.S., Canada, and the U.K. Now, go to Casper.com/slash/MacBreak to get your Casper mattress today, and you can save fifty dollars towards selected mattresses. Some terms and conditions apply. Casper.com/slash/MacBreak. You do have to use the offer code MacBreak at checkout. Casper.com/slash/MacBreak promo code MacBreak to save fifty dollars on select mattresses at Casper. C A S P E R dot com slash Mac break. Even the kitty cats will love your Casper. Feel good story of the week. iPhone and Apple Watch, their emergency SOS feature saves a woman and her child after a collision. Drunk driver to spotlight hits the car. Casey Anderson, this is the late last year, was hit. The car was launched by the force of the crash. The occupants were buffeted until the vehicle came to a stop. Everything in the car went airborne. She was, she hit the steering wheel, the headrest back to the steering wheel of the window. I blacked out for about a minute. I couldn't see. My eyes were wide open. All I saw was black. My hands flew around to feel for my phone. Then I realized I had my watch on and commanded it to call 911. Turned out she had a severe concussion. That's why she couldn't see. With brain swelling and bulging discs. And it, thanks to that Apple uh, SO, emergency SOS feature, she was able to just hold the... We should tell everybody how to do it. Renee, have you ever used emergency SOS? I have demonstrated it. I have never used it in, in real life. Tell us how but you do it. You can do it on your Apple Watch or on your phone. And you basically, uh, you just start squeezing. Um, I'll use this because it's really big. You just start squeezing the sides and it'll come up. In uh, six seconds. Yeah, it'll start... <laughs> I'll terminate now. Wow. So I don't, uh, yeah, because it'll, it'll actually <laughs> call eventually. The house. Yeah. Yeah, and it'll alert your emergency contact as well, which is really important. Everybody should out, know that. Yes, yeah. yeah, set up an emergency contact. Set, <laughs> go to Apple Health, set up that whole profile, because first responders can do that on the phone too. They can see what blood type you are. I, I've talked to first responders. They say the most important thing, the thing we really want is to call your next of kin. Yeah. Because then we can ask them questions. It's all in there. Fill that out. And then if you do the same thing, you hold the side button on the watch for six seconds. Uh, it will uh, actually didn't even take that long. You get an emergency SOS on the on the watch. Um, turn and set it up and do it. it. It's a huge advantage of Apple being so unified with their products is that first responders are likely to know about this and look for it That's because right. the iPhone is just so iconic that they've become aware of it. It's not a fringe feature. Yes. <sighs> it's nice to have a feel good story here are the new emojis uh -oh. <laughs> all of them <laughs> not all approved yet oh yes these are approved wow oh there's a poutine emoji leo i'm boycotting we're getting 157 new emojis em now this will be that means there's god dang it 208,000 2823 emojis oh man you want to see all of them here we go here's a first look this is uh from Emojipedia, all 157 new emojis. Party face, pleading face with big sad eyes. Anime face. Woozy face. <laughs> I like woozy face. <laughs> Cold face, hot face. Uh, redheads, gingers, you <laughs> finally get your own emoji. And of course, skin tone, as always, is variable. Curly haired people, too, and our. Oh, All us go. old folks. Hey, we go. Yeah, get mine. And people who look like cue balls. Actually, that's <laughs> awesome. Super villain face. I love it. <coughs> Superhero. Not much difference between the villain and the hero, uh, but there you go. Spoiler. Oh, a leg. Have a leg. Go with the arm. Or a foot. Oh. Just a foot. Or a tooth or a bone. 
Oh, now I can be a, a, a scientist with goggles, hiking boot, woman's flats. Ooh, microbe. <laughs> this is good. I'm liking these. Mosquito, parrot. These are the uh, not the Apple emojis. These will be the uh, these are the kind of the emojipedia emojis. But uh, Apple will undoubtedly do something similarly 3D. The hippo's interesting. Stepping out, cupcake, little, bagel. A little bit of controversy with the lobster. You realize that that is a cooked lobster. That's not oh, a live lobster. it's red. Right, lobsters are not red. That's not good. Well, also, again, that's a, serving suggestion. Right, that's a Montreal Second. bagel, not in frisbee, lacrosse. Was it a Montreal bagel? Chess I'm pawn, just, softball, puzzle piece, magnet, toolbox. <laughs> we really like the scientists. We got a petri dish, a test tube, a oh, lab coat, is, DNA. It is flu season. Yeah, an abacus for those of you who uh, go old school. I wish they had a turntable. Two turntables. Two turntables and a cart machine. There's a toilet paper roll, red envelope for the oh, Chinese New Year. Gong, Gong Hei Fat Choi. Yes, I saw that. Renee did a nice little Gong Hei Fat Choi for everybody. Nice. Yeah, lots, nice of, uh, lots of emojis. I, I'm, I'm still, I'm still old. I, I'm making the transition to emojis where instead of I, I can't be bothered to like take my hands off the keyboard and click on something to get the thumbs up emoji. But at least I'm now typing in parentheses thumbs up emoji close parentheses. So you're saying that is a uh, Montreal bagel? Is that I'm really? claiming it, Leo? I'm claiming it. I know that <laughs> other people are going to say it's a New York bagel. <laughs> What is, is that a mango? A, That's a mango, it looks like. Looks like a mango. Yeah. The tooth is disturbing. Yeah. It's yeah. a healthy well, especially because it's a healthy tooth. Someone pulled that's, that's malpractice. So a dentist <laughs> pulled a healthy tooth. Well, they cut a foot off, Andy. I mean, they're, they're obviously dangerous. <laughs> uh well, if you get a foot, you should put it in a shoe and you get your choice. Oh, that's there. A, that's that's no, that's that's the Monty Python emoji. I insist ah. on the Monty Python emoji. <laughs> I just find it. And of course, I, these will drive up. The disembodied leg is kind of creepy, too. Yeah. Oh, kind of it's a major award. Beginning. Put that, put that next award. to the lampshade. Uh, is that a skunk or a badger? What is that? I think it's a badger. Uh, it's, I say badger. Not a wolf or a badger. Okay. Peacock, parrot. But it's not a honey badger. Not a honey no, badger. I Hippo. Think they, I, I think they should have an emoji for a honey badger. Or like we call it in Canada, a syrup badger. That just looks like a regular badger. Yeah. Huh. The hippo's huh. doing some weird hippo dance. Oh, that's not, that's, that's not a, so is that a raccoon or a badger? I'm sorry, the the the, the, the full face that's version of the animal. A black and that, white that's, raccoon. That is not an American raccoon. Really? Okay. That's a Chinese panda coon. Oh. Okay. I should I should remind everybody that the hippopotamus is the most feared animal in Africa. It wasn't As the crocodile it should and the snakes be. that we were warned about. More people die from hippo uh yes. crushing than it's lightning like or terrorists. Also, I understand they're very, very sarcastic. Andy, you raised a sad point. That is a cooked yeah, lobster. See? Yep. Well, that's I'm not, how I'm we not, know not, them. I, I don't want to be. I don't want to be that guy. I'm just saying that you know, cartoons always show them red, and I'm saying these. Anytime you have like a, a walking around red lobster, you're looking at a zombie lobster, <laughs> which is awesome. But make sure that you, you understand what kind of character you're writing. What is? I'm choosing what, to believe it's a Lego lobster. What kind of pie is this? I don't. Is that a, sh a pecan pie? <laughs> it's, a, it's a thick pie. It looks like a, a pecan pie. Might, might be almost a no, meat like pie. A, yeah, meat pie. You know, with it, yeah, with, doesn't it have, that's, isn't that like an egg in the middle of it? So it could be a pork pie? Oh. See, they try to make these international, as international as they can. And that cupcake. I mean, come on. That is a beautiful, that is a sift cupcake. That's our local cupcake mm. factory. Yeah, Alex, did I you would, have any good cupcakes or donuts in Seattle? There's voodoo's up there, right? I didn't. I did yeah. not. I I uh, just had coffee oh. and a and a really good <laughs> and uh, a really good croissant sandwich. Croissant sandwich. All right. Um, what now? Uh, is that soap? I guess that's soap. It's pink. <clears throat> yeah. Or lo oh, there's lo is that loofah next to it? Or a there's sponge? a sponge or a loofah. Yeah. Well, they've they've uh, you know they really pretty much. It's kind of hard to imagine an emoji missing. Except so what for I, no, what I believe, Leo, yeah. What I believe, Leo, is that you should be able to long press on the French fries and get options for tater tots, ah, hash browns. Ah, now you're cooking. Yeah, yeah, now you're cooking with cheese curds. Uh, it was, yes, third, cheese third, curds. Party, third party opportunity for 3D touch. Would you not agree? <laughs> a replacement emoji keyboard where it's 
Actually, actually, that's that's not a bad idea because I, in addition to doing searches, you could probably start off with five emoji. That is just here's a smiley face. Here's a piece. Here's a uh, here's a piece of cake. If you long press on the piece of cake, okay, now you're now you're digging into food. So are you looking for baked goods, dairy, vegetables? That would probably be the easiest way to actually get to the one you want when you can't when you don't know how to how what what keyword has been assigned to the actual emotion you're trying to hit. Third party opportunity. As long as we're talking emojis, let's talk about emoji apocalypse. Uh, For some reason, I wish Apple I could take us to that. seems to be rejecting games with emojis in them. With the one word reject, one line rejection, your app and apps met metadata include Apple emoji, which creates a misleading association with Apple products. For that um, reason, I thought they fixed that. This is Moji. Can you have to make your own emoji if you're gonna? I mean, these rules are so uh, they're they're completely separate divisions within Apple that do a lot of these things. And the I think the 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 hair they were splitting is that if you used Apple emoji in your art, then you were violating Apple's copyright. Not that if like you weren't displaying it on the keyboard, but you were actually using Apple's emoji to advertise your product. That was a violation of Which Apple's copyright lazy. on those specific. Yeah, you should. If you're gonna, here's uh, you know, if you're gonna have a crying face in your game, you should use uh, your own damn crying face instead of. Yeah. Well, not just that, but if you have in the app store and you have like a like you, if you're showing off the emoji as part of your advert, I forget what the what the details were, and sometimes it was being enforced like always, and sometimes it wasn't being yeah. enforced. Which is now our maddening. friend Jeremy also, Burge, who is a regular here, he's with the uh, Unicode committee for emoji said it seems reasonable to me that Apple would want some level of control over emoji use in the App Store, but banning it outright from anything other than user inputted text feels feels a step ste user inputted text feels a step too far in my opinion. Um, maybe, yeah, anyway. Well, that's, so. well it's, it's, it's nothing to worry about. As far as App Store rejections, historically Apple's policy seems to be create the policy, wait to see how many people complain. If people don't complain, <laughs> it's not a problem. If people do complain, review the rule. And right. that's, that's things that things have been like uh, huge problems two years ago. You don't hear from them as of three months after the first brouhaha because they figured out that, okay, this was too broad. Now we can narrow it down. Yeah. In fact, one developer said they've always, I've always had emojis on my leaderboard, but uh, Apple must have just noticed. So yeah. And they, you know, <laughs> who knows by now they may have, uh, they may have uh, changed the policy. And some of it is, is sometimes like a legal department person goes, well, if we don't enforce our copyrights, then right. we lose them. Right. So that's an important point to make, that every company designs its own emoji based on the uh, the Unicode standard. And that is artwork owned by that company, Twitter, whether it's Twitter or Google or Apple or uh, or anybody else. Facebook, they make their own emojis. Uh, let's see. Uh, some you rumors. Talk about the drone, Leo. You talk about the drone getting We're lost. Getting that's hilarious. We're getting there. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> yes, that's almost. Tease uh, it. Let's just tease it. Spotify has uh, job listings that suggest they might be doing. You might be happy about this, Alex. Their own speakers. Mm, I'm I'm done with speakers. <laughs> you bought the last speaker you're ever going to buy. Uh, here's the deal. Is I. I have, I mean, I'm just like, I'm not looking for more smart speakers. I've got, I know, I've it's got overkill. Google Home it's in a, it's, some rooms. I have a, a, a Amazon Echo. I have Amazon Show. I have the Apple. And yeah. then I have, and then I have 14 Sonos servers that go out to all these speakers. I don't need any, I'm done. I'm done. Like, I don't need any more, more of this. I, they, they're too late to the game. I mean, they, for me, I mean, I'm just like, pfft. I can't go. And let's 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 just put a time code at a mark for two years from now when we're talking <laughs> about the great new speakers that we're replacing all of our oh, existing speakers with. Damn it. <laughs> I joked on Twitter if Spotify made a speaker and it didn't support Apple Music at launch, would people be that just would be funny? Yeah. Uh, and people said, "Oh, well, first of all, they're not never going to make a speaker, and second of all, Apple's a platform company, and Spotify oh, is a people service have company. That's no sense different. of humor. That's just <laughs> that's called literal internet." I have to admit, I didn't even notice. Like, I was like, oh, I'll just put Spotify on. And I listened to it on the speaker. And I was like, it works. You know, like, it didn't, I didn't, before people started complaining about it not being compatible, I was like, oh, it's not perfectly compatible. But it didn't, I didn't notice it at all. I get, and, and yes, there is one set of more speakers. I need outdoor speakers. So I'm still trying to figure that hey, out. I see, you see, you're not done <laughs> yet. I'm not done yet, but I don't think they're making outdoor speakers with this. Uh, we were, we ripped a Planet of the Apps and Carpool yep. Karaoke saying Apple can't do production. Well, Carpool Karaoke has been renewed. So well, they can do it well enough. Carpool happened. karaoke was fine. It was at Planet of the Apps that just yeah, that was really bad. So bad. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Also, but it also just it's not new. Also, carpool karaoke costs next to nothing to produce. Yes, it's yeah. two people in a car. 
the 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 most most clever thing that one of the most clever things anybody ever explained to me was somebody in the TV industry and saying if you ever see a show and you're wondering why the hell is this in I can't believe this is in the 13th 14th season season you're looking at a show that is cost that costs nothing to to produce and let's let's and, let's let's phrase nothing in broadcast oh, sorry, terms in, is between in a quarter million right. and seven hundred thousand dollars what could this cost a buck fifty I mean you got to rent a you car don't about do they pay the artists. I, they I, gotta fly them in. I'm sure they take care of them. And I bet yeah, you. I yeah. bet you these are. Uh, I bet you it's a hundred thousand. Hundred to two hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. Hundred to two hundred fifty thousand per right. episode. I could I do it. I could Apple. I could do it for twenty five dollars for you. We could not. <laughs> <laughs> if I can, if I can use the car for the rest of the day to run errands, I'll do it for fifteen. <laughs> uh, you know, it's cute. I have yet to see any of the Apple ones. I, I've seen most of the James Corden ones. Yeah. But I'll, I mean, these look cute. I'm more watching the James the Corden Apple ones were yeah. probably the ones that are much cheaper. These are you can see there's more production value. Oh added. yeah. So they're doing, you know, yeah. Oh yeah. And they're getting big stars and, and, and they're, they're blowing, blowing up cars. cars. Yeah. See. Okay. That's Apple. Can't do it cheap. Watch they're only on Apple Music. Out of the market. So uh, one of the reasons I haven't seen it is I only now have subscribed to Apple Music for my HomePod. Hmm. So now I can see it. Right. It's very confusing to say something. You can watch it on Apple Music. That's very confusing. Yeah. Like, why get that movie on iTunes? It's just, I don't know why we keep getting stuck in these. Yeah, do, do we got to fix that. Do you have the YouTube TV? I do. I, I love it. YouTube TV is, okay, I think, the I one like to it. get now. I like it. It is the one to get. It's the one to get right now. It's it's so uh, for few areas, TV. The interface is a little funky. Like they they have to kind of go back and like. I like the interface, but uh, no, it's you, like it does you, this weird thing. Like it, it skips too fast. Is it the interface itself is fine? They're for some reason the way they program the interaction is is funky. You know, it's like I like it's the, the, I like the, uh, the the guide is great because you can hover oh, over yeah, it and no, you can see the live video. They've added some channels, including Turner Classic Movies. Frankly, that was enough to put mm -hmm. me. If I weren't a yeah. subscriber, that would have put me over the top. Here we are, Sweet Bird of Youth. Paul Newman, uh, let's see, that's great. And the fact that I could, if I if I want to record it, it's I'll show you what we do. And I do this uh, every few weeks. I go through uh, Turner Classic Movies' schedule. You don't even have to buy movies anymore because I just record all these old classics. Let me see if I can find it. Where'd it go? We're listening. Uh, here it is. So I just I just look at the Turner Classic Movies' schedule, and I see what's coming up. I'm going to stop that. Subject with roses. Oh, Viva Zapata. Let's say I want that. Press the plus button. Now I'll have a recording of it. Boom. That easy. That easy. They, they really did it well. But yeah. you raised an interesting point, Renee. They don't have locals. I'm sure they don't have Montreal locals. Do they have it in Montreal yeah, at all? Do. I don't think they have it in Canada have, at we all. Have locals. Yeah. Like, we I'm, have locals in the Bay Area. Right. So you, you want to you wanna go somewhere where there is, uh, there, you know, it makes more sense if you can get your live locals, because then you're going to get the Oscars, you're going to get yeah. the Super Bowl. Actually, Super Bowl was blanked out on my phone. I had to watch what? it on the, yeah, on my iPad phone. I think Verizon has some sort of TV. exclusive. But you could watch it. Yeah, you could you could airplay it. You could watch as long as you were watching on a TV, it was okay. I wasn't going to watch yeah. it, and then I saw a couple updates. Now that on this my, is on, on Apple watch, TV, and I realized this is going to be like the best Super Bowl ever. Yeah. I better watch the. I want to watch like the second half. Oh, I don't want to miss the biathlon Nordic combined. So I'm just going to record that. There you go. Still get all the ads. I'm not saying you don't. Yeah. You do. I also point out just how terrible YouTube made their new Apple TV app. And just is please, it bad? Beg them. It's, it's worse than the Amazon Prime app, which was an open GL. Yeah, that's port. what I was talking about. It's it. I don't think the it's, interface it's, itself is bad, but I think that the the interaction is horrible. Yeah, it's, it's again, I think it's one of those cross-platform apps where they'd rather have fast and cheap than good, and that's surprising from you, too. But it's it was, just, it's, we're just seeing so many complaints It literally it. gets stuck in a state where you can't select anything. And then I went out and looked around a little bit, made sure I could select everything else in, on Apple TV, and came back to it. No, you can't actually select on what you want to play. And it's, I want to yeah. just say that I, I think it's almost an exclu excusable to make a bad Apple TV app because there's, like, TV ML templates. If all you're doing is a video player... They even like give you these templates that right. you can use if you want to be lazy about it. Uh, but they yeah. had to do and it's it. Not just, and it's not just making these bad apps; it's like making it an inconsistent experience across platforms. 
because people are, I, I don't know a lot of people that decide to buy all, uh, all Apple TV gear is maybe the exception, but it's so easy for someone to be using a different version of the YouTube app. If they got five people in the house, there's going to be three different versions, three different platforms uh, in play at any given time. And when I switch from the Android TV, YouTube TV player to the Apple TV player to the phone player and have to deal with different, I, I don't know where my watch list is. I don't know where my watch later list is. I've, I'm surprised that Google has not really made this a consistent experience across the platform. It's it's even worse when you realize how when you have a problem with a, a product made by Facebook or Apple or Microsoft or Google, you wonder, do these people not have enough resources to do a proper job of this? Do they need to hire some people to do this? No, they don't. They've got money. They've got time. They've got people. Why not actually create a great version of your product? I have to admit, I'm so modal, I don't even notice it because I, I, you know, my, like my, there was a really my good TV, TV is just is just on the TV, and then my, and then I watch movies on my iPad, and I don't really watch anything on my phone anymore. I just there was a really good study about because uh, there this is a huge concern in the design world whether you make it like it's a Firefox thing like do you make Firefox look the same on every um, on every platform or do you make it suit the, the specific platform that it's on and what's more important your brand or the platform feel and what they found at least according to the study and I'll try to find the link for it is that. Most people aren't cross-platform. Most people don't have multiple versions of, like they have Netflix on eight different things, but they and they never watch it on anything but one. So if you make it work well, like if you make it fit with the behaviors of the platform, then people already know how to use it because they're using eight other apps on that platform that are that are well-behaved. And they're not going to, like their tablet is such a different mental context than their TV that it's okay if they're not similar to that. But the YouTube app has to work the way the Amazon Prime app works, the way the Netflix app works, the way the TV app works. And then no user has any problem with any of the software yeah. on their device. It's, yeah, it's, it's a different, I think it's a different thing with TV apps because I really don't think that any company has created a breakthrough paradigm for this. It's always up, down, left, right action. Uh, and there is voice, but it's, it's a sub. I don't know. I don't know anybody who uses that feature who is not currently at the second being filmed for a commercial for Verizon or for one of those products. <laughs> and so the, the big and the bigger problem is that I there are often times where I just don't even see the same paradigms being transferred from one place to another. Uh, I, I I love uh, Adobe Lightroom. I like the fact that I can use it on my uh, my iPad or anything or any other device. Uh, but I'm disappointed that I get the same experience on Windows as I do on the Mac. One of the reasons why I really loved using Aperture was that it really was designed by people who think in terms of the Apple user interface. It really does fit into the same world. Uh, it's it's a very like like in Star Trek where every single every, it's an alien from eight kajillion light years away, but he or she still has two arms, two legs, two eyes, a mouth, and a nose in the familiar places we're used to seeing them. Uh, and so when you wind, when you wind up with a gelatinous blancmange alien, it's like I will still have you play on my Scrabble team. I'm <laughs> you're good you're good blancmange. I, it's, I'm glad to have you here. Just realize that. I'm going to have to, it's, it's, it doesn't fit in with the rest of the world that I'm living in. As of a couple of days ago, Apple uh, changed its address for the first time since 1993. If you go to the Apple uh, page uh, for uh, contact us, their new official address, it used to be one, what, greatest address ever, mm -hmm. right? One infinite loop. Um, I, this one's not so bad. One Apple Park Way. Cupertino, California, 95014. They're still at one infinite loop. Yeah, the building's still there, but if you send, if you want to send mail to Apple, send it Otherwise, to Otherwise, Eddie, Eddie Q is going to get all your mail. <laughs> is Eddie stuck in the old campus? Well, I think iTunes is, because right now iTunes is spread out. They have results way That's and they have a bunch of other be. campuses. Yeah. And I think they're going to try to unify, but I think they they already don't have space. I think they don't have space at Apple Park. No. Now they don't have space at infinite loop again. No. They're, <laughs> they're growing fast. Yeah. Well, they, you you got to think, though, that that is. I know that you can know in your head, oh, it's not, it's not an insult, but to to see all your co your colleagues moving to the new campus and you're stuck in the old one, that's kind of very be. organizational base. I get, if there are org, if there are teams that are split up, it'll be super annoying. But as long as it's like no, any sure any sort of group is in one yeah, place, I'm sure they're not doing that. I, yeah. I think there's some advantages to the older one. I, I, I truthfully, one infinite loop was great. I, I like the fact that it was really nicely integrated into a community where at, at times you feel as though you're if you go from one building to another, you feel as though you're leaving a place and entering another place. Um, infinite loop 
excuse me, uh, the the spaceship campus is a little bit more of a compound feel to it. I think. I wonder. I wonder what it's going to be like to live to to live and work there. You know, twelve hours a day, five or six days a week, seven days a week, and during crunch time, when it's like I am. No, I know that when I when I when I wave to the parapets as I walk past the outer layer of the of the fortress, I know I've left the campus. Otherwise, I know that I'm still within the ring. The, yeah, the just look up from your phone. Parking off of the glass. If you look at the if you look at the <laughs> the, the, the uh, drone shots, the parking for the new campus is pretty far away from the from the building. You know, compared to the one in Loop. Bertino, where you parked. Bertino right said he lost, sir. Um, I'm just gonna just real quickly. I want to find uh, Scooter X, our chat mod, went to the shareholders meeting last week. And he has posted somewhere. I'm going to find the link for Scooter X. He's posted the um, pictures he took. He said it's really a beautiful campus. Uh, let's see. He wrote a nice little article about it. But where is uh, the, uh, the photos link on Google Photos? I'm trying to find it. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Thank you, Scooter it really is a, a gorgeous. Now, Scooter X, you took this with the Pixel too. I hope you're not gonna. Uh, we're not gonna have any problems. You get block here. tackled. <laughs> <laughs> um, it it really is gorgeous. He says there was music coming out of the ground. They have speakers, underground speakers. I love this roof too. We've seen these yeah. amazing pictures before uh, of this of this roof. And and a beautiful. You've been here, Renee. So I apologize for boring you. Oh, that's beautiful. But uh, yeah, there's there's Scooter's badge. He drove five hours, got up very early in the morning to go to this. There's the uh, the pneumatic tube that shoots you up to <laughs> delivers people all through the campus <laughs> like a, like Augustus Gloop. <laughs> Oompa Loompa. He's, he's fallen into the into the iPhone mixing tank. So uh, I'm not sure how you got this special treatment, but he got a he did get a tour in a golf cart uh, around the grounds a little bit. So he did it. He was able to see some of the landscaping, which is coming in. Here's uh, here's the reception in a tan towel. Well, that's not a tan tan. That's different. Yeah, tan towel is the road that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Should have been tauntaun. <laughs> tauntaun. That's the one I was thinking. Here's the, uh, this is the visitor center, right? The little uh, reception yeah. area there. And they have the Hiroshima chairs. I forget, I never asked uh, Renee, uh, what's the, what's the accommodation for people with disabilities inside the theater? Uh, you know, I don't know because special, special assisting and, and assistive devices. Yeah, I, I actually don't know. And I'm, I'm ashamed that I don't know, but I believe they have the ablators. Scooter X has a little trouble well, moving around. I, did you, Scooter X, did you get, uh, did you get any special uh, access uh, treatment there where you able to obviously he was able to get in he says he was let in a little bit before the crowds uh i'm sure they have an elevator that mm -hmm. you can uh get down in he's not in a it's chair a, but he's just, accessibility in ada is so it's so you have important to do apple it that, you well not only do you have it. to do it it's so important yeah. apple that yeah. i can't imagine that's not actually probably as good i believe as they possibly. had seating too like they had special seating i'm sure they do yeah uh, matthew roberts has been posting uh, drone videos of the <laughs> apple campus has a new job he says a drone pilot crashed into Apple Park over the weekend. The drone pilot got in touch with me shortly after the incident to ask if I could assist in locating his down drone. So he took out his <laughs> Phantom 4 Pro and began searching for it. This this is his search. Oh, there's the video of it crashing. This is like the snow speeders <laughs> looking for Luke. So obviously it's not a Phantom 4. The quite not quite the 4K imagery we're used to. Yep. They're going to get so scolded by old man Cook, who's sick and tired of you kids. He says there was no <laughs> sign of premature. It just, this is this is what happens to me every time I fly a drone. It just, it just went down. Now, maybe Apple has a new supersonic device. Yeah. The phasers, the phasers were set Crunch. to stun. Crunch. And he said, I don't know where it landed. Uh, so he got... Oh. Uh, a little help. Oh, no. And there it is. You can see it in the uh, solar panels. You see we're zooming in there. Didn't damage them. No. I'm surprised a guard didn't run up there. I didn't even see it. It looks like, yeah. uh, looks like a DJI, actually. It looks like a Phantom. Hmm. The pilot notified Apple of the incident. 
<laughs> and got a um, stern er, talking to. Um, um, <laughs> hello, <laughs> Apple. It's me. I, I crashed. My, my name is Guy from next door. How do you get the footage back? I guess he, that was a live feed. It's Billy yeah, from next door. I crashed my drone on, across your uh, fence. Can I yeah, hop over? Uh, yeah. That was probably finders. Yeah. But you, know, you, know the, you know what the punishment is? He's going to have to wash windows for an entire week. And that's a lot of windows. <laughs> Till he learns his lesson. I wonder if Apple. Well, obviously, um, uh, this drone is fine. Uh, Michael yeah. uh, Matthew Roberts' drone didn't get uh, taken down, but you know, you got to wonder what Apple's doing to protect themselves against well, flyovers. I, I imagine this is just getting. Legal. This is, you know, well, also, it's, it's just so damn annoying. On top of everything else, to say, that, look, we are sick. We, you know, it's. I would not like to be an employee at Apple, knowing mm. that there could be people sending drones just yeah. for fun. Looking in the windows. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. It's illegal. You can't do it. You can't jam the right. frequencies as an FCC but nor can issue. you nor can you fly over people. No, no, you can get someone in trouble for flying over people, but you, you can't. But you take you can't, down the drone. You can't take down the drone. No, they have unless you did it with a sandbag cannon. Well, they that wouldn't be illegal. Uh, it. I don't know. I know that there's so there's. They have, I wonder they if they're protected. Fire nets. They have drones yeah. that fire nets at other drones, yeah. and um, and those uh, are not used in the United States. What about EMP, Alex? Could you could you set off an EMP? <laughs> Sorry, an EMP, EMP. <laughs> electromagnetic pulse. Probably pulse probably yeah. take your the, drone down at the same time. Yeah, that's the problem. It would not only take down the drone, but the nuclear fallout would yeah, just kill everybody in the Apple part. You know, you know it would be a very very a, Apple eco friendly and awesome uh, solution. Attack hawks. You just train <laughs> yes. hawks. You you spend like a year or so flying like drones that, are, that have like raw meat attached to them. You train these hawks to attack these to get meat and boom. And you have to get it just right so they learn to not come from the bo above but come from below and put their claws the up. The eagles are coming. Hippie, the eagles are coming. I'm just going to Google anti-drone hawks. Yeah, actually, <laughs> this is not a new idea. The Dutch police... Have trained oh. hawks. I thought I'd seen oh. this. Oh. Have trained hawks to take drones. <laughs> My life is completely up. out of the sky. <laughs> see what, I, I want to see what they do. They just take it down. I got it right here. There it goes. For yeah, the, you're, you're not gonna you're not gonna win against five million years of food based evolution. <laughs> Terminated <laughs> with extreme hawk. That's a lot prejudice. of that's a lot of R and D. Look at that. <laughs> Boom. It's easy for that's them. The battle for the it's planet. It's no trouble. Feel. Nope, no problem. I'll be glad to get it. The company says they're continuously investigating any possible, extra possible protective measures in order to protect our birds. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, he's a bald eagle. That's course. a bald eagle. So great. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you for serving. Hand, God bless you, like Dutch so National Police. Either. Thank heavens. you for your service. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mess with the Dutch. They can command. They can command attack birds at their will. Could Tim Cook like just raise his glasses and use his Omega beams to? Knock I really out. want Apple to do this. <laughs> just, just have hawks everywhere. Hey, we can't help it if the hawks like drones. Uh -huh. All right, get your picks ready. We're going to take a break and come back with your picks of the week. Renee Ritchie from iMore.com, Alex Lindsay from the Pixel Corps from the Chicago Sun Times, Mr. Andy Anako. Our show today brought to you by my favorite blog platform, my favorite web platform, and frankly, the world's favorite web platform. 29% of all the websites in the world run on, say it with me, WordPress. WordPress is phenomenal. Some of the best magazines and publications use WordPress's platform. I use it for my blog. If you've got a business or you want to set up a personal website, that's leolaporte.com right there. I'm very, very proud of that. I just, it was so easy to do. You don't need experience. You don't need to hire somebody. WordPress.com guides you through the entire process from start to finish. They take care of all the technical details. They keep the site up. They keep all the patches, all the plugins, everything they have hundreds of beautiful designs to choose from. You get automatic features like built-in search engine optimization. I love social sharing. That means somebody who likes what you're doing can share it with their network on Facebook and Twitter. And, and by the way, WordPress.com itself is a social network. You can have a follow button. I get hundreds of followers from WordPress.com. Uh, I'm a business plan owner. I like that. It gives me access to every plugin, every theme. I can even bring my own. Best customer support team, and that's available to everybody. 24 hours a day, Monday through Friday, weekends too. They can really help you get the most from your site. Plans start as low as $4 a month. Come see why 29% of all websites run on WordPress. Get started today with 15% off any new plan purchase. 
Go to wordpress.com slash MacBreak to create your website. Find the plan that's right for you. And my site, leolaporte.com, if you want to see what just little old me can do. I love WordPress. WordPress.com slash MacBreak. 15% off your brand new website. Uh, full disclaimer, I've been using WordPress practically since the beginning. I think since 2004, 2005. WordPress.com slash MacBreak. Let's start with you, Renee Ritchie, your pick of the week. So uh, late last week, Twitter announced that they were no longer going to be maintaining Twitter for Mac, which started as Tweety for Mac by Lauren Brichter of 8-Bits fame, became Twitter for Mac. Um, they created a new version of it, and then they promptly abandoned it. Uh, and so I wanted to recommend two of my favorite Twitter clients. Yes, you can still go to Twitter.com in Safari or Chrome or whatever you like, or you can use uh, TweetDeck, either the, uh, I think it's an Electron app, um, or that you can use TweetDeck on the web, whatever you like. But if you want a native experience, if you want a really Mackety Mac experience, if you love the idea of Twitter being persistent, of having keyboard shortcuts, of being available in a window or columns, or just in other ways acting like only a native app can, then there's two wonderful choices for you. There's TweetBot, um, which is a really opinionated Twitter client that has a little bit of that Tweety, there's a little bit of the original Twitter uh, for Mac flavor. Uh, did a lot of things around mute filters. It's still in a phenomenally quick way to triage Twitter. If what you really want to do is get in there and just handle all your mentions and DMs uh, and lists and all those things, uh, Tweetbot is a phenomenal way to do that. And there's also Twitterific, which has just proudly returned to the Mac after a Kickstarter project. And Twitterific, they I mean they found a way to hack around polls because third-party Twitter clients do not get access to all the same APIs that first party do. They don't get polls. They don't get group IMs. They don't get a lot of other features. But they found a way if you put like a hashtag poll or the poll emoji on it, they'll they'll send you to a web view with the poll in it. Uh, they've also got an edit button, which kind of surreptitiously deletes your Twitter, your tweet in the background and retweets for you. And they've also got phenomenal accessibility support. So if you're someone who's uh, near or, you know, someone who's got lower or no vision, um, or has other accessibility needs, and Twitterific is just a wonderful choice because web clients are traditionally not great at surfacing specific needs, people with accessibility issues. So if, if you really love Twitter and you use a Mac and you want Twitter on your Mac, and for some reason you are still using the Twitter for Mac app, then either of these will serve you really well. Yeah, it's just so sad. I wish they'd give him back uh, Tweety or something. Well, Lauren is super busy, but the people, they, they outsourced the last version of Twitter for Mac. It was made by a really, really well-known uh, third-party development house. And my understanding is some of the people who worked on it were like, please let us keep working on it. And Twitter was like, nope. Uh, and there was a, an interesting exchange between Dan Frommer and John Gruber and Jack uh, Dempsey on, uh, not Jack Dempsey, sorry, Jack um, from Twitter. I'm blanking on his last name. Uh, on Twitter where he was saying, we really want to invest in the experience of the web, but that's, Twitter never felt like a website to me the way that Facebook or something does. It always felt like an IM client, and yes. IM clients have always yep. been best as native apps. He, I didn't realize Lauren had worked at Apple, so he he did the OpenGL stack on the original iPhone. Yeah, here's your a profile of him from a few years back. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Tweety was the app that invented the pull to refresh. Yes, correct interface, which now everything the interface has. On the interface on iPad was so forward-looking. It was like nothing I'd ever seen before in terms of tablet software. And Tweety for Mac, he basically rewrote UIKit for Mac, called it Twee, uh, and implemented it that way because he wanted to do things with scroll views that just AppKit uh, at that point in time couldn't do. And it was, it was remarkable software legacy. Yeah. It was very, you know, I felt, I'm sh I mean, sure it was good for Lauren that Apple bought it. Uh, but, but, but of course they killed it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Twi I'm not Apple. Twitter bought it. And of course they've, killed it but pulled a refresh there it is there's the that lauren brichter should get credit really for creating that that metaphor that every program now uses it's just so natural it's just a way that like the vocabulary like you he said that he was just fiddling with his phone and pulling down and he thought well that's a useful gesture something should happen when yeah. i do that yeah so, it's just it's, natural it's like it's it's like he invented adverbs i'm yeah seriously it's like <laughs> yeah there was, there's a, there's yeah. a, there was a working language that now and as soon as it appeared it feels as though that was there all, always brilliant uh, I'm sure that Lauren got a nice payday, and I hope he did. Uh, and what's he what's he what's he doing these days? What is Eight Bits up to these days? You, uh, he is busy working on some personal projects, and you may or may not be able to see a brief visit from him on tomorrow's Vector. Oh, that's nice timing. How convenient. Yeah, I, uh, I haven't told anybody else that, so everyone else will be surprised unless you watch my. Uh, 
That's nice. <laughs> um, Letterpress was great. I remember that program. Yeah. Is that still around? He wrote that in OpenGL. Uh, I, it's still around. Yeah, I don't believe he maintains it anymore. Yeah. Well, I will be listening tomorrow to find out what uh, Lauren Brichter's next act. I'm sure, will be. he's. I'm sure he's off just write, rewriting UI Kid and when WebGL. He's, an a, hour he's a really <laughs> talented designer and a programmer. It's really, uh, really, really cool. Thank you, Renee. He's one of those few individuals who is an, as good an engineer as he is a designer, as he is a creative in terms of what sort of interactions people want. And like Alex, uh, he worked a little while with Mike Mattis at Facebook when they were doing chat heads and some of the uh, and paper and some of those things. And he would just spot one like you're dropping one frame out of the 60 on this one. Let's fix that. And yeah. Great guy. Alex Lindsay, you've got a few things coming up. We do. Tell um, us about that. Alex, I, I, I hate to interrupt there, but before I learn what you're about to talk about, I just want to say the friendship, if <laughs> I say brotherhood, <laughs> we've enjoyed over these years I, is one of my most valued things. And one of these Cherish. one of these days, you know, I, I, I've been meaning to say that I've got, ever since I moved, I have all this old stuff that I can't use anymore. I was going to send you a list and whatever you want, you just have for free. <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. I'm sorry to interrupt. Except for Crank, go, except I, for go, crank go ahead and talk about whatever. Yeah. <laughs> well, the the, the um, you know we're we're uh, we're building up. But the, what what really happened here is we we realized we had a lot of stuff um, that's been you know we're, we're slowly trying to unify under one. Um, <clears throat> pipeline um and production, pipeline. production we, pipeline we should mention if you didn't know that alex Lindsay's company pixel core uh is the king of the hill in terms of live streaming interactive broadcasts uh you do them for the biggest companies governments i mean all over the world uh so you more than anyone we know buy a lot of video production gear <laughs> yeah and we've, a lot. and we've gone through you know we've evolved through a lot of a lot of production gear and, and we got to a point where we had three or four different pipelines that were that we were using and we realized we needed to kind of centralize on one we're also at the same time we're building up a studio in washington dc to support people who want to stream in, inexpensively from our studio um and uh and so we're trying to raise cash for that at the same time and so we were like you know what we've got we did, did the math it's like over a million dollars worth of hardware that we're not you don't use. I don't know if we never use it. It but used we don't to use be in our enough. basement. I know it yeah, because yeah, it used yeah. to be in our basement. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's a lot of it's a lot of gear, and so we decided to um, uh, we decided to se we're decided to sell it at pretty good rates because we just want to try to get move it out as fast as possible. Everything's priced to go. It is priced to go. Um, we're gonna we're gonna it'll be the best deals we get. We'll probably be a little pushier on eBay once it gets there. So the idea is that we'll do a in person sale oh, on so Thursday. So you have to go to. Uh, oh, here's there's two two layers. Okay. Uh, one is is that we're gonna do um, uh, an in person sale on Thursday at our office. You actually get to see what our office looks like, which has been kind of okay. secret. Um, and then uh, a week or two later, we're gonna do an online one. So whatever didn't sell on that Thursday. Um, and we're using Square. Don't don't bring checks. I don't do that. Really, bring credit uh, cards, cash or credit. Um, well, Square doesn't take cash. No, I, I can take Alex credit does. or you can bring cash. Oh, okay. But, but you can't bring checks. Um, anyway, unless they're, you know, cashier's checks or whatever. So anyway, so um, the, uh, but we're gonna try to get rid of as much as we can on Thursday, and then we're gonna do an online sale on uh, sometime in the next week or two before we start putting everything on on eBay. So everyone will get kind of a. Um, uh, everyone will get a chance, at least the people who listen here and follow me on Twitter and Facebook and stuff like that will get a chance to either come and check it out or do it online. And then it'll all start getting piece by piece up on eBay. Um, we'd like to try to avoid the amount of work that it takes to, I mean, there's literally uh, 200 or 300 things that we're selling, everything from little USB mics and headsets that oddly enough, I mean, like literally we have headsets, you know, the, you know, those um, Plantronic headsets. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I've got five of them that are still in boxes. Like we bought them oh, as. Oh, that doesn't as, surprise me. Well, Alex. they're they're backups for they were backups for uh, hangouts that we used to do, and so so anyway, um, so there's a lot of stuff. Most of it is in incredibly good condition because we um, uh, we were always worried about it breaking, um, and so how can people find out about? Um, it? So what they can do is they can go to pixelcore.com/slash sale. So it's I try to make it as easy as possible. If you go to pixelcore.com/slash sale, you can. Um, uh, you can uh, just sign up. We'll send you a list tomorrow. It's very, it's very 
cloak and dagger here because we're just finishing it up. Uh, a list tomorrow, and then if you're in Northern California on Thursday morning, we'll send you the address because what we're going to do is we're going to do the sale, and then we're going to move all the equipment out of there. Um, and so, uh, so anyway, so um, you'll have a you'll get an address on Thursday if you're in Northern California. Otherwise, you will. Uh, Again, if you sign up for the same list, we're going to tell you how to look at it online um, in a in a couple um, in a couple weeks when we get it organized online. We, we'd like to it's pick score estate sale. It's not an estate sale because that no, 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 no one's died. No one died. Um, and so uh, it's just a it's a final it's a spring cleaning sale. I think that's 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 really a better uh, better better solution. We just we have a lot of gear that again we weren't using we weren't fully utilizing before it becomes. Not useful. Bring, bring your stuff. credit card. Bring your pink slip. Bring your wife. Come on down. Bring auction got, paddles. Can we bring got, auction paddles. <laughs> FS uh, uh, FS one hundreds, like five or six of them. We've got We've one got, less EX three, I think. Oh, one less. Yeah, yeah that, one, that, on one's, that one. That one's off. Okay. But we got some older EX ones. We also have um, Sony P ones, Sony P twenty three or F twenty threes, which are pretty expensive cameras. Um, and then like sound devices, seven eighty eights, and you know all kinds of stuff that we're um, making available. So, so a lot of this stuff uh, is not old. No, no, no. A lot of it's still in production. So, yeah. so it's um, and uh, so and we've got just lots of lots of stuff that we're trying to move. And mixer somehow we have, I don't know how how we ended up with like twenty mixers, but we have like a lot of some of them are digital, some of them are analog. We've got little ones that are tiny and big digital ones, and and um, but again we're trying to. Uh, um, tie that all together. So anyway, that's that's the sale, um, and uh, we'll uh, um, I'll, I'll put it in the in the chat room there, so you can get, people can get it there, and um, just sign up there, and we'll send you both updates for the in the room, and then updates for the online sale that's coming up before we get everything on there. Um, anyway, so that's that, and then my pick of the week is really uh, the new Black Magic camera. Oh, now we know what you're replacing all these other yeah. cameras. <laughs> so the new Black Magic camera. This is a. Uh, this is the what's called the Black Magic broadcast camera, um, and this was like really for those of you in doing production. What 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 Black Magic added last week? I think it was last week or the week before, is really the last missing parts that we had for broadcast, which is. Um, so this is a two thirds inch camera. Now you might wonder why we're going down to two thirds inch because we mostly, almost all of our work nowadays is super this, 35. This is not 4k. It is 4k. Oh, it is 4k. Okay. So it's a 4k two thirds inch camera. Um, and, uh, and it also, they've also added, so it, it's great ENG camera, but they've also added fiber backs for it so that you, you know, so you, you can control it with a CCU. These are all things that are required for broadcast studios. Um, you can use standard SEMPTE fiber to um, to to oh, basically you don't have tie to use together. those weird Sony cards anymore uh, either. Yeah, that's been they've gotten they've gotten ahead of that for a while. Um, the uh, that's it'll take two thirds inch lenses, and the reason that that's important is because uh, B four the B four mount is something that is very common in broadcast. So all everybody's lenses, and and the thing is, you don't spend money on on cameras as much as you spend money on glass. So everyone's got. You know, like a single lens is anywhere from fifteen to a hundred thousand dollars just for the the glass. Now, most of the time for the really big glass, we we rent it, but we 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 own a lot of glass as well. And um, getting that, you know, getting really good glass is the thing that um, uh, uh, is is complicated. And so, no one wanted. You know, there's a lot of resistance to the to the other mini ursas because you couldn't really get good. Um, you know, couldn't get you, you couldn't use your old glass on it effectively. So this is this is a two thirds inch chip that'll let you just use all the broadcast glass you already have. Um, it we have it up on the uh, we've had it up in the lab, so they lent us one to to look at. Um, I get it until the end of today, I think. <laughs> and um, but we're gonna buy you know we're gonna buy um, a couple of these. And the reason we're buying them is because they integrate with the rest of our pipeline. They we can throw big ninety X box lenses on them. They, you know, they've got fiber backs and everything else. It's um, now this. They say it's a broadcast. Does that mean it's not good for the field? I mean, or no, lower can, light. So you can use it. What I what I'd say about that is that it is. It's a little grainier than um, than the two thirds inch chips that we're used to. Just just a touch, um, but the grain is much nicer. So the grain is much more closer to film a film look oh. than 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 the um, than the grain that you get when you get digital grain from a CCD or a, or two thirds inch CMOS, it's typically like this really ugly, you know, electronic grain that is not particularly useful. Um, and so, uh, so you really can't gain up at all. Um, the, this one, 
is, um, you know, it's, it's, it's got a little bit of grain to it. It's got a, more grain than the, than the Super 35, as you would expect, because it's a much smaller, it's, it's you know, a third the size of the, of the Super 35 lens, uh, sensor. So it's, it's going to be much, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have a little bit more errata than, than you would have there. But it is, but again, it ties into a standard video production pipeline. And the reason you want two, thir two thirds of the chip, it's the, and it's the clarity on the chip is very high. And the reason that you want a two thirds inch chip is also because if you're doing ENG, you actually don't want the short depth of field that you're typically used to for you know artsy stuff and and film because you're handheld, you're trying to get somebody in focus, and having the Super Thirty Five lens also when you throw it on a ninety X lens, so those big box lenses you see it at uh, baseball games or football games. The problem is you put Super Thirty Five lens, I mean Super Thirty Five sensor on on the top of one of those, even if they made one, which they don't. Um, the depth of field gets so tight that you can't actually keep anybody on focus in focus and so so having a two-thirds inch and a little bit more depth of field actually makes uh makes a difference so these are ef lenses no no these are pl or, i'm PL. sorry not pl, not PL uh, b4 before b4 okay. lens um, there's so many lenses pl is really what you're using for your but, super but 35. they do say it's have lens adapters for you can get other lens adapters but yeah. what this one really is built for is um a b4 mount okay. which is is the standard broadcast uh standard broadcast mount and again you and the crazy thing is you can buy this glass is so common that you can buy those eng lenses for hundreds of dollars or low oh, thousands really? yeah, because this doesn't come with a lens it's 32.95 minus a lens right and then for us the other math is we're going to still buy a ccu for it um which is another three thousand yeah, dollars and then we're going to buy a and yeah, there's, there's, you'll, you'll, once you package it together, it's a little bit more expensive, but that's the way it is for a lot of cameras. I mean, it's not yeah. like you buy them. Uh -huh. It's incredibly inexpensive for what what they were. But I mean, yeah, a full package is still going to well, cost this 15 grand. still blows me away that you can get a camera of this quality for 3500 bucks. I know that sounds like a lot. But it's only five Alexes, <laughs> right? Yes. No, it's a it's a great deal. Um, if you're if you're going down the path, now, if you're not doing ENG or you're not doing a bunch of those things, you know, Super Thirty Five still makes sense for you know uh, for those types of things. They also, by the way, they this is a typical Black Magic. They took their two ME switcher, the new twelve G two ME switcher, and they said, oh yeah, there now there's a software upgrade that makes it a four ME. <laughs> so there's you know like like we just we didn't buy, you know you, if you have a two ME and you spent the extra money on the on the twelve G rather than the six G which I didn't so now I'm kicking myself I've got like six of the six Gs um, the uh, the the twelve G is now just with an update are now four ME now what we're hoping for in NAB is of course a four ME control panel but we don't know if that's going to happen or not but anyway but the camera is a good i mean if you're looking at broadcast i mean again we've done some pretty heavy testing over the last four or five days on the on the uh sensor and um it's uh it's as good as it's going to get for two thirds i'm impressed black magic's really kind of they're just chewing it up yeah they're chewing it up i mean the they're you know they came out of nowhere they well, they didn't and come out of Sony and Canon and Nikon and yeah they didn't see it coming i mean I, well they, and and they just they bought they bought Ultimat. And they haven't set it out right, but the new the new update for their switchers, I was like, rem the the controls for their keyer looks remarkably like Ultimat. Like they didn't say, oh, we put Ultimat in because they're still charging ten grand for an Ultimat box. Which, by the way, a four K, ten K, a four K, ten K keyer for four for four K footage, I paid thirty three thousand for a ten eighty P four four four, you know, years ago. So it's still dirt cheap. You know, and but now they built it in a lot of it into the switcher. So it's um, uh, and uh, the issue is is that the the thing that has us kind of spooked and why we're still not buying, we weren't planning to buy any cameras right now, is because Blackmagic released an 8K capture card a couple months ago, and so everything here stopped because we were waiting to see if they're going to release 8K cameras and at Jeez, NAB. Louise. You know, so so anyway, but the uh, um, the pipeline overall for Blackmagic is is uh. You know the, the 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 pipe. It's it's really hard. The 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 they built an ecosystem that um, I think in the early days it was pretty unstable. But at they this had a point, vision for where they wanted to go, and they've clearly kind of lived it. Grant Grant, who's the the founder of Black Magic, is really the you know the Tony Stark of, yeah. of video. Nice, yeah. Andy Anako, pick of the week. Uh, I can't say that I've used this device, fortunately, but it's such a cool device and such good news for iOS users, uh, especially particularly outside the United States. That I really wanted to talk about it. Uh, it's the Freestyle Libra uh, Continuous Glucose Blood Glucose Monitor. 
Uh, we've been talking a lot about how the, one of the holy grails of, uh, of of medical technology is is there a way that people can, people with type one diabetes be able to uh, take uh, blood glucose readings through let's say a watch a sensor in a watch as easily as they can take their pulse and we're not nearly there yet uh, but this system has been around for a couple of years uh, it it's a double system where you have a hand, little handheld computer plus a, a sensor that uh, basically a, a stick on patch on the inside of your arm that's applied with a special like spring loaded like <laughs> installation tool uh, that uh, basically what it is is the is the uh, applicator tool is like a needle with like a, a sensor filament inside it and when you Set, set the spring, press, press it against your arm and press the button. It goes and it the needle deposits this flexible filament where it can get uh, blood readings from. And there's an out, outside uh, uh, medical grade uh, adhesive sensor with a battery in it that will then uh, be uh, taking your blood glucose readings once a minute and be able to provide a accumulated reading once every 15 minutes. Uh, and then you have this little sensor uh, that you carry with you that every anytime you want to test your blood, you just simply instead of pricking your finger, you just it's it's all NFC. So you just simply tap it against the sensor and it will simply download up to eight hours worth of readings. So it's not uh, so it's not just uh, taking your blood once a, a few times through, during the day. It's like, well, I'm about to exercise or I'm about to ride a motorcycle. I wonder if I want to make sure that my blood is my blood sugar is OK before I go. Do I need to eat or anything? And immediately let you know, here's what your blood uh, reading is like. And also being able to give you these continuous, again, once every 15 minutes of, t of uh, blood levels and that the the device plus a desktop app can show you really fine grain data about what your blood level sugar levels were doing over the course of the day. Uh, it, the device also lets you log what you've been eating, when you've been eating, when you've been sleeping. So you can really get those things dialed down really, really fine grained. Uh, again, thank goodness I don't have diabetes. I try work <laughs> despite the despite the stuff I sometimes uh, tweet photos on, on Instagram. Uh, I am working hard to make sure I avoid that. But uh, I was taking care of someone with type 1 diabetes and it takes a long time to really figure out monitor very closely what these signs are and make sure that someone doesn't have uh, a problem that will uh, send them into a health crisis. Uh, and the idea of having this as a simple uh, simple single tap is an amazing thing. Now, the reason why it's uh, newsworthy and the reason why it's a piece of Apple news is that uh, uh, Core NFC was introduced with iOS 10, excuse me, iOS 11, which is the first ability for third parties to get access to the NFC reader that uh, I've, the uh, modern iPhones use to use Apple Pay. Uh, and so this is, a, I believe, the phone app is the first iPhone app that has been approved by the App Store that uses Core NFC. Uh, the bad news is that it, it's not available, for, although the, the hardware and the sensor and the little device and the desktop software is available in the United States, the phone, uh, the, I, the iPhone app is not available in the US yet. Uh, but it's uh, available in the UK uh, and it will certainly be, uh, uh, barring any regulatory problems, I'm sure that's going to become available uh, in the US very, very soon. As one step closer, imagine the imagine, uh, Freestyle coming up with a version of this that's like a low power Bluetooth. So it can actually can talk to your Apple Watch at all times. Uh, and I don't even believe the UK version of this app is working with HealthKit yet. But imagine this stuff being able to integrate into HealthKit apps. As it is, you can easily share your data with not only your medical professionals, but if you have someone who is your caregiver, like if you're uh, if you're taking care of your mom or your, or your husband or whatever, uh, you can have your app linked to this device so that you're getting these results, too. So you can really see what's going on as easily as the person who's taking care of themselves can. Uh, and I, I have to admit, I wasn't aware of this until about a year ago. Uh, when uh, a one of my favorite YouTube sites, uh, Techmoan, which I've talked about before, uh, the Matt, the guy who runs Techmoan, uh, is, a, is a type 1 diabetic. He's been using the system for the past two years, and he uh, did a video about it about a year and a half, I think, ago. Uh, and when you see it in use, it really does seem like it is 2018 and medicine is starting to starting to move into the modern age. Uh, because again, the reason, I mean, uh, I, again, I only have the experience of someone who's taken care of a type 1 diabetic as opposed to someone with diabetes themselves. But you try to you try to balance the need for information about blood glucose levels with the pain and the interruption and the anticipation of taking blood readings when you actually have to 
again, make your patient bleed, even if it's just a drop of blood, the ability to simply casually, whenever the moment strikes, whenever the whenever someone's feeling a little bit tired or whenever someone's about to be away from their stuff for the next two or three hours, they want to make sure they're going to be okay for the afternoon. Uh, the ability to simply trivially do that and look at that data, that is uh, that seems like such a huge step forward. And integration with phones is another big, big step because we carry these things with us uh, everywhere we go. So can't wait to see it move forward on the Apple platform. Yeah, this isn't the uh, non-invasive uh, blood readings. It's the holy grail, but it's right. as close as you can get right now. Uh, right. And uh, Phil Libin, who uh, the former CEO of Evernote, was I don't think he's a diabetic, but he was wearing it uh, a few months ago when he visited twit and he was he was absolutely sold on this he's probably considering investing in it would be my guess but he was really blown away by this you still need a doctor's prescription this isn't something you right. go to the drugstore and buy for yourself and uh, it, you, it can be paid for by medicaid with the doctor's recommendation but it's, it's not cheap uh, each one of these sensors again it's a little nfc computer with a battery and a, and a device uh, lasts only for about 10 days of readings i think each one costs about 40 40 50 bucks uh, uh, to replace okay. Uh, but Matt, again, the uh, tech moan uh, says that it's not something that you notice when it's installed. You feel you feel a prick when you, uh, pin prick when you install it. If you are uh, unlucky enough to like bump that part of your arm against a, a chair or something, it'll it'll be a little bit sore. But again, it's not a it's not a hard needle always in your skin. It's a filament that's yeah. flexible and apparently pulling it off. Uh, I'm sure with, with someone with my body hair, the the the, the pulling the hair out it will hurt a lot more than simply pulling the sensor out. Very so, interesting. Great stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm keeping exciting. my eye on this because yeah. exciting stuff. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We do Mac Break Weekly every Tuesday right after iOS today, usually about 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, that would be 1900 UTC if you want to stop by and say hi. Watch the show live. You can do that at twit.tv slash live. You can also chat in the chat room at irc.twit.tv. Join the bunch of great bunch of people watching the show uh, simultaneously. But of course, on demand audio and video is always available after the fact at twit.tv slash iOS or subscribe in your favorite podcatcher. That way you won't miss an episode. You can also listen. I think this is going to be the biggest boon for podcasts. You can also listen uh, just by asking your Echo or your HomePod or your Google Home. Uh, to play uh, iOS or uh, Mac Break Weekly. It's so fantastic. Did I say twit.tv slash iOS? I think it is. Twit.tv slash MBW. I'm getting confused. What show is this? Twit.tv slash MBW. Uh, I bet you you can listen to Renee Ritchie's podcast, Vector, that way. All you have to do is ask Siri, hey, Siri, let's listen to Vector, and they would play it for you. You'll find that at imore.com slash vector and uh, tomorrow lauren brichter that'll be exciting thank you renee for being here thank you so much. i appreciate it andy anako's podcast material same thing you just say hey goog <laughs> let's listen to <laughs> the material podcast and there it would be uh unfortunately andy of course writes for uh, uh chicago sun times i think you, <laughs> unfortunately I think, unfortunately you have to buy a paper to read him <laughs> actually they must post it on the net too right it's available on, on many of the best web browsers today. Not yet on Echo, <laughs> but everywhere else. <laughs> uh, you also find Alex Lindsay at the Pixel Core, but the best way to keep up on his uh, many, many uh, ventures, including, I guess, this sale, would be to follow him on Twitter. Twitter's the easiest one, yeah. Twitter.com slash Alex, A-L-E-X-L-I-N-D-S-A-Y. Thank you, everybody, for being here now. I'm sorry to say it's time to get back to work because break time is over.